This week's episode of the Wild Card Podcast is brought to you by... What is that? Would you rather? Why are you here? Get off me! Get off me! Would you rather have a forklift or a palace? Would you rather face a werewolf or a slog? Would you rather be a Franklin or an Alice? Would you rather throw a punch or give a hug? Would you rather eat fried chicken or burrito? Would you rather drink hot cocoa or iced tea? All the choices you're considering sound neat Or would you rather do a podcast? Rather do a podcast? Rather do a podcast with me? Welcome to the Wild Card Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Richardson, and my co-pilots on this journey to wherever are my good friends, Emily Kohler. Hello. And the man who puts the new Ron Ron into the do Ron Ron, the Reaper M. Jones doppelganger extraordinaire, Drake Gillespie. It's true. <laughs> Etc. You know, we always like to start off our podcast by letting our listeners learn more about us. So today's favorite question is... Who is your favorite professional wrestler? Oh, I really like the New Days between. Hey, hey, uh, wrestling wrestling macho man. hey how did you guys get into my house? I, the door was oh, open. Oh, in yeah. some well, countries, I, I legally live what here. What the blue jack hell? And why is Jared tied up? Oh, Jared, 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 uh, he let us in. He let us in, and then he... And tied uh, himself up? Yes, correct. That's that exactly what yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. No, listen, they're hijacking our podcast. Which, Jake, do I shoot? Why are you on? It's your podcast. No, 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 no. We're doing our own podcast. About professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Macho so Man Randy Savage. Not, not cool, wrestling. Emily. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. N- now, look, I'm the new host. The better host. You know what happened to the last guy who tried to replace me as host? Rainbows and kittens and hey, butterflies. Hey, I wrote that. I'm the new Ron, bitch. Nobody replaces me twice. <laughs> Welcome to the Wild Card Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Eaton, and my co-pilots on this journey to wherever are my good friends, Jeff Curtis. Hello. And a glutton for punishment and cheeseburgers, Ron Blair. God, I love cheeseburgers. I was just telling Mackenzie how much I love cheeseburgers. That uh, that name of Ron Blair comes courtesy of official deckhead Jake Richardson. Thank you, Jake. That was a suggestion he gave. If you guys ever have suggestions for favorite topics, names of Ron, commercial ideas, topics, we would love to to hear them. And don't be too mean. Don't be too mean. Because this podcast is all about you. Now, Ron, tell them what this podcast (laughs) is all about. (laughs) This podcast is about only now realizing, uh, after having known Jared for three or four years, that he looks exactly like Vincent Van Gogh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'll look at it. him. I look, look like at the man. I've he been looks told just like Van Gogh. I look like every person who's ever lived. I have That's the most true. ambiguous average appearance of all time. It is, I was looking at your profile earlier today and I went, holy shit. That's Van Gogh. He's I, just not missing an ear. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Give it time. Wait for my descent to madness. Oh, uh, yeah. But there were, I mean, there were times in college when, like, every other week it would be somebody else I got told. I was like, and there were even times I'd be at a restaurant and people just thought they knew me. Yeah. Or once people get to know me, they're like, you remind me of this person, like this old person they've known. Just, <laughs> I think I'm just the default position on mankind. That, maybe that's it. That's what maybe it you're the everyman. You're the Jimmy Stewart, Tom Hanks. I guess. Everybody thinks that Jeff looks like me. Huh. Except for people who know us. Yeah. <laughs> and even sometimes they get a little yeah, confused. Yeah, even sometimes them. Tim. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Tim Isaac's right. Wait, there are two of you in this room right now? Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, that's what the podcast is all about, apparently. Right. But one of the things this podcast is regularly about is just us. <laughs> it's actually uh, about. It's just us and the things yeah. we like to talk about. And one of the things we love to talk about are movies. Yeah, we Another love movies. Another thing we love to talk about is ourselves. Or Ron. Yeah, we or me. <laughs> Which is one of our songs. I love I love talking about me. So here's what I thought for this week, our favorite. I want you to think of some of your favorite movies, and I want you to recast characters as us. Like, put us in those movies. So, for example, mm-hmm. have you guys seen V for Vendetta? Yes. Okay. One of my favorite movies of all time. Jeff, I took you uh, as the main character, actually. Wow. Uh, the main character is named V. You never see him. Because he's wearing a mask and it's completely covered the entire time. He's voiced by Hugo Weaving. I replaced Hugo Weaving's voice with you. Oh, cool. 
That Ron, would work. That would actually Ron, work I, really I well. I struggled with you. Am I Natalie bit. Portman? Because that's well, who I want to be. You're the sexiest. Obviously. Oh yeah. No, I, I put you as I have two <laughs> positions, and I'll let you pick which one you'd prefer. Okay. First, I put you as John Hurt, who is Chancellor Sutler, the villain. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I also thought, though, and this is a smaller character, but I think you'd be great at it. Stephen Fry's character, who I'm not works familiar. for he works for the company that like is, does all the broadcasting. He's kind of like yeah. a Jay Leno talk show host kind of thing. Oh, okay. Hill British talk show. He kind of does a rebellion against Sutler by airing an episode that makes fun of him, and then yeah. he gets killed for it. Oh, I like, like that. You know Stephen too. Fry is. So yeah, I know who Stephen Fry is. He kind is. of like it's an open rebellion that most people wouldn't be comfortable doing. I thought you would handle both the humor but also the the ballsiness to right. go that far. No, that's good. Those are two great characters. And I, I put myself as Chief Inspector Finch. He's kind of a, a, the main in, a detective who's trying to catch V, but also is starting to doubt the government and what they're all yeah. about. Wow. Oh, that's a good one. Cool. So that's you guys want to do? I, mean, I did. I did three. I don't know if you guys each. Did I have three. four. Yeah, I'm I did three. Four. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you go next, we'll, we'll do a little rotation here. My first one, because I watched this movie over the week, I, wa I showed it to Caleb as he had never seen it, and I was like, this will change your fucking life. Just watch to the end. Don't okay. ask questions. Uh, the Usual Suspects. Oh. That's a great movie. Uh, I, would, I would recast Jared as Dean Keaton, the uh, Gabriel Byrne character, okay. the one who's going straight. Gotcha. And then uh, Jeff as Fenster, Benicio Del Toro. <laughs> Benicio Del Toro. Character. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great. And then, because I thought of me as Finster, but I would be better as uh, Todd Hockney, the the uh, Kevin Pollock smartass <laughs> yeah. character. You fit but, well in those. Yeah, yeah, that would be very me right there. <laughs> I, oh. And I think Jeff would be funny as hell. Oh, absolutely. In, in the in the Fenster part, it was great to see you and Starcatcher getting take on a more humor. Yeah, than that was great. Yeah. That's that was fun. fun. That's a fun mm -hmm. role to do. Yeah. All right. So my first movie is The Big Lebowski. Ooh, oh, that's okay. good. I've actually never seen that one all the way through. Oh, it's I know, fun. I know bits of it, but I've never seen. I it. cast myself as the dude. I think okay. that's completely fair. Okay. Yeah. I cast Ron as Walter. That, that's very fair. And I, Who's the I, actor? That's uh, John Goodman. John Goodman, okay. yeah. And I cast Jared as the Steve Buscemi guy. Oh, okay. Shut the fuck up, Donnie! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fair. I could, I could play a lot of Buscemi. Yeah, that's a good one. Next up for me, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Excellent. The original? I'm the T-Rex. The original. Ron, oh, Ron is the T-Rex. No, actually, I, <laughs> I put... Uh, Jeff, this is the time I had a hard time with you. Okay. Yeah. My initial thought, John Hammond. Okay. He's, he's, not, he's not Muldoon. That was the other one. I wrote was Muldoon. It? Yeah, I wrote Muldoon. Slash is, Muldoon. It's, it's that's a, what I would John Hammond slash Muldoon right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Because I think you'd be the, it's it's almost like the, the Quint from Jaws kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> kind of just the like, you don't mess with these velociraptors. Oh, oh right. I got killed by a velociraptor. <laughs> right. Like, it's really, he's really Quint. Uh, he's they not attack in the book. You, they attack the book, you from he's a the much sides, better character. but I'm going to stand in the middle of all yeah, three. In the book, he's a much better character. And yeah, I put, And I put Ron, I put you, of course. Dennis Nedry? I thought about it. We yeah. talked about that before. I knew it made you uncomfortable. It, it is. I so instead, I put you as Ian Malcolm. Oh, that's perfect. Just babbling that's incoherently, but also knows what's going on, and no one else realizes that he well, knows yeah. what's going on. Yeah, and he's kind of he's kind of not he's, shitty about it, but he's like, guys, he's kind of an this is dumb. The time. Yeah, I love him. And I put myself, I as, I put myself as Alan Grant. Of course oh, you did. Yeah, that's Alan Grant. Because he has no character profile. He's just <laughs> the main guy. Uh, we've we've done my next one before, but just as a reminder, okay. I'm doing Jaws. Of course. With Jared as Hooper, yeah, the, the young, the young guy. guy, Jeff as Brophy, mm -hmm. and uh, and me as Quint. I think that's fair. So since we've done yeah. four, go ahead. You said you had four. Go ahead and do your next. I one. have four. I did Star Wars. Uh, I thought uh, about it. I thought with, about it. With Jared as Luke, of course. Oh, okay. That's I, okay. Uh, me as Han Solo mm -hmm. and Jeff as Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I would have if I had cast myself. I wouldn't have thought Luke. I would have thought R two D two. But I like Luke better. I like yeah, that. Luke. Especially and the funny thing is, the reason I'm not a big fan of the newest Star Wars movies. Yeah. But I really did like Luke in the new one. His, yeah, I like Dark him. turn a little bit. Yeah. Like, I come back at the end. I thought that. Who was do beautiful. you think I would cast you as in Finding Vincent? Find, oh, okay. I'm like, find Vincent. I don't know what that... Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, Harking back okay. to it just three minutes ago. Okay, buddy. That's clever. I saw what you did. All right. My second movie is Sweeney Todd. Oh, okay. okay. Jared would be Sweeney. Wow. Nice. I didn't what an honor. One. Ron would be Adelfo Pirelli. Of course. Uh, I've heard that before. Pirelli. That's not the role that I want. And I, I, would play him. I would be Judge, judge Turpin. Judge. That's the See, role I, I want. Would, I thought you would cast yourself as Sweeney. I would want to play. I would want to play Sweeney, yeah. Yeah, but I think you're more it. likely to be a, a Sweeney well, thank character. You, sir. I would love to play it one day when I can finally pass for older. I think everybody wants to play Sweeney. I yeah. think I don't. I would, I think, I'd love to play Sweeney. I would love to play Sweeney. I, I still kind of like play Anthony. I'm, I think I'm too old for Anthony, and I don't know if Toby has an age. Toby, yeah, he's you're, usually you're younger. Too old for, he's yeah. usually younger. Yeah. All right, my my last one was Truman Show. Oh, oh, really? You guys have both seen that one? Yeah. Yep. So, Jeff, I put you as Noah Emmerich, the actor. He's the best friend of Truman. Okay. 
Uh, he's yeah. Marlon. That's he's, a, he's one of the. He's like the main actor who's Truman's buddy who's convincing. Michael all these Rappaport, I think. No, Emmerich is the actor. Oh, mm -hmm. Noah Emmerich is the, the actor, actor that plays, plays Marlon. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Ron, I put you as Ed Harris, Christoph. Yeah, that's I, that's I what I, I figured. Myself yeah. as German, of course, because yeah. I used to play a lot of Jim Carrey roles when I was a kid, like skits and things. <laughs> sure, sure. I I was hoping you'd pick me for Ed Harris. Of course, that's a good role for me. It would be a great role for you. That's that's the kind of thing mm -hmm. I could really chomp. He's into. seductive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not just a dick. He's, yeah, and he feels like he's doing this oh, for the right art, reasons and art all that. Yeah. Uh, the last one I chose, because I stuck with my favorite films, mm -hmm. rather than going, oh, we'd be great in this. I yeah, didn't care about that. I'm taking my I favorite three movies. Three of my top five favorite movies. So I went with Psycho, is my last yeah. one. You've already told me who you think I'm like from that one. Well, the, was it Sam Loomis? Well, you cast me as Norman Bates in one of your things, and you literally once on the podcast said I have a Norman Bates thing. You do, but I cast me as Norman. Okay. Uh, because that's the mood I'm in today. <laughs> but and I picked Jared as Sam Loomis, okay. and then Jeff as Arbogast, the uh, detective. Mm. Okay, that's that's searching for uh, Marion Crane. Okay, and those were my choices. Okay. okay, Jeff. Okay, my first. I'll tell you the movie I was going to make my third, but then I couldn't think of three I'll, characters I'll, for all I'll of I'll us. Give my, I'll give my fourth as well. Then okay. okay. I was going to do the Long Good Friday, and Ron was going to be the Bob Hoskins character who's. The head of this um, British um, mafia trying to Fair. trying to make inroads well, with Americans, but movie. then oh, yeah. everything's Easily. going. It's an easy skin for I'm me done. to step into, and I've never seen that I've movie. But once either. you said Bob Hoskins, I went, "Oh, okay, great. it's a great yeah. movie." But there, I love there's Bob not Hoskins. a Jared or a Jeff part in oh, okay. it. So, so um, it's just, just Ron. It's just Ron um, as Bob Hoskins. So then I went to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, which I've also never seen, but I should. You know the song, but oh, okay. I know the song very well. So, and even um, Cohn, right? Jared would be the Clint Eastwood character, Blondie. Wow. Great, there we go. Yeah, Ron would be the um, the Eli Wallace character, Tuco. Okay, I'll take it. And I would be the I Lee Van Cleef character, Angel Eyes. Which one's the bad guy? So, Jared's the good. Yes, you're the. I'm the ugly. You're the bad, and I'm the ugly. I'm the bad. Okay. I'm the bad guy. Well, what no, I mean? we're all bad guys. Oh, oh! <laughs> well, I mean, if you've been listening to this movie, podcast for sixty-two episodes, you know we're all the bad yeah, guys. Yeah, that's true. So, so my final one wasn't a movie as much as it was a franchise, and it okay. was the Avengers franchise. Okay, okay. And I put Jeff as Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you know the leader of the organization. Okay. I put Ron as Tony Stark. Wow. I think snarky, you know, snarky and bitter. Yeah. Again, just kind of knows what's going on. Right. When you do the hard stuff, and I put myself as Bruce Banner. The that's per, the you scientist. are very bannerish. Yeah. So, all <laughs> yeah. right. That's oh. uh, so we would love to hear uh, other thoughts on movies. You yeah, like, if the decades any movies you like, you want to cast us. Now you yeah. can put yourself in them too, obviously. But, right. but make sure the three of us are in there. We don't care. Right. <laughs> I, uh, before before we get started, I, I want to do a plug on behalf of my my brother in law and my sister in law. Okay. Uh, they're they're trying to fill up the cast for Nightmare Forest this year. Mm. Uh, the, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law are great people to work for. I think I've mentioned them in the Haunted House podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that they're now doing the Nightmare Force. They're, they're really great people. They're, they need actors. They need talented people. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much it pays, but it pays each night. Yeah. And you show up there like an hour before it gets dark. And everyone I've known who does these things says it's a blast. It's a hoot. Yeah. I'm it's a lot, a lot of fun. It's grueling. It's grueling. It's tough, but yeah. it's fun mm -hmm. as hell. A lot of students so the, one of the one -on look right up here. Nightmare Forest on Facebook and get with those people if you're interested in it and getting a little money. Uh, a lot of people use it for Christmas money. Yeah, they'll just save up their whatever. Back in my day, it was thirty five a night. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's still that or if it's fifty or whatever. But you get a little money and uh, you save it up. You buy Christmas with it and you just have a good time for the for the Halloween season. Okay. So they're going to be doing that on September fifteenth at five p.m. At Nightmare Forest, but for more information, go to their Facebook page, hit them up, message them, and uh, just let them know you you want to come out. It's Very it's cool. a lot of fun. Very it's cool. A Speaking lot of, fun. of a lot of fun, we're at a Jeff episode. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, so um, and this... nobody does it better. Oh, I see. Oh, than Jeff Curtis. All right, you're giving away the theme, but Sorry. okay. Hey, I'll, Sorry, I'll honest, I would love to know at this moment, just about twelve minutes in the podcast, who from Ron's reference knows what this is about. You've probably read the show description. You probably already know what this is about. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, so unlike usual, I actually gave... 
I actually told Ron and Jared what we were going to be talking about before so they came in. It was necessary. So that they could be prepared necessary. coming in because otherwise it would be a whole lot but of... No one else knows. It was for our eyes only. Right. For our eyes only. That's right. That's right. It was, it was just one of those things where sometimes on this show we need preparation. Yeah. Yes. On once in a blue moon, yep. we will prepare each other and say, "This is what I'm yeah. doing." We Let's get a face-off episode. Yeah. yeah, we've done this before. Right. So um, this is your preparation H episode. Yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. So um, today we're going to be ranking the James Bond 007 movies from worst to best, and you're going to we're going to leave you with the definitive wild card yeah. ranking of James Bond yeah. movies. The official, the last right. Uh, authority on James right. Bond. And now the, the criteria, voice. the criteria that I gave Ron and Jared, even though who knows that whether we'll follow this criteria. Yeah, no. The criteria was um, actor, um, song, uh, story, villain, Bond girl, and whatever else you wanted yeah. to include. So yeah. I, I kind of <laughs> took some of that into consideration. The, I mean, I kind of, it was easy. I did my top few, I did my bottom few, and then kind of filled out the middle slowly thinking about some of the things. Uh, I don't know if I considered everything you wanted, but I did. I do have my ranking. You have your ranking, and Ron. I I haven't seen a James Bond film <laughs> in about five years. I saw the first fifteen minutes of Octopussy like a month ago. Yep. I've seen clips from Diamonds Are Forever just when it's on TV. Uh, I've seen. I've not seen any of the Daniel Craig except for Casino Royale. Which is great. I missed Die Another Day with Pierce Brosnan, and I haven't you seen did Moonraker. Not miss you did not. But miss I've anything. seen all all the rest of them like 15 years ago, like yeah. 10, 15 years ago. So I don't remember enough that mm -hmm. I feel like I can make my own list, but yeah. I can certainly Join can certainly arbitrate here, yeah, <laughs> now, and mediate I, this I conversation. I made a suggestion when Jeff said we were going to be doing this about how we do our ranking. Yeah. My suggestion was since we're going from bottom to top, we I'll say my 24th, yeah. and then Jeff will say his 24th. Yeah. And we'll have two movies there, or we'll have one movie twice. We will only discuss a movie once he and I have both ranked it. Yeah, right. And then from our rankings, we'll compile an average. You know, whatever my 24th is, whatever his, we'll average them together. We'll get a, a number, and then from those numbers, we'll be able to put them in order. Right. And we'll figure it out. We'll yeah. have a weighted system mm -hmm. of ranking here. This right. is scientific. We're not just willy-nilly oh, fucking no, 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 around no. here. Right. So, you, would you like me to go first? Well, first okay. let me yes, just sir. give an intro to Absolutely. the whole Bond series. That's yeah, like a good yeah. Point. Okay, there were actually 26 movies uh, oh, crap, I called um, James with James so Bond 007. Casino like Royale with, Laz uh, not Lazarus, okay. but uh, Peter Sellers. It, w it had Peter Sellers and Woody, I mean it had, um, yeah, um, Woody, Woody Allen, Allen. Yeah, Woody yeah, Allen. and Bla David Nevin. Was it Nevin. Blake Edwards? Uh, it was a Blake Edwards, it okay. was a comedy, and... A, and that movie is not part of what we're going to be ranking because it's so out of the... It's, it, yeah, it's unofficial. It's, it's unofficial. It's yeah. not connected to anything else that happens. And it's a totally different... Um, it's a comedy. Style. It's a now, different yeah. style. We do have one in here that is also unofficial. Are you right. Never Say Never, never Again? Never Say Never Again. But yeah. it did yeah. have... Right. And it had Sean, Sean Connery, Connery in it. And it was... Um, it, 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 it kind of copied a storyline. It was Thunderball, not United Artists, though. It was not well, what makes a, it, it wasn't a Broadway It copied a story from Thunderball because the person who wrote the original yeah. Thunderball actually owned the rights to that. To right. that and then, then um, the um, Broccoli did their own Thunderball. Yeah. Right. All right. So let me just Go ahead. Let, let me just give you an yeah. intro to the James Bond stuff, and then we'll get into our ranking. Okay. So. Um, James Bond, the character, was created by Ian Fleming, and the first book came out in 1953, which was ca um, Casino Royale. Yeah, and it's it's if nobody has ever looked into that story, it's awesome right. how Ian Fleming came to that. Right, and so uh, he was a, a um, he worked during World War II in, with naval intelligence, British naval intelligence, and he based James Bond on a, composites of a lot of the people he worked for. Yeah. Now he wrote a total of 12 novels and two books of short stories about James Bond. Um, all the novels and some of the short stories have been made into movies. Yep. Right. Okay. In 1961, Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman purchased the film rights to all the novels, except mm -hmm. for Casino Royale, which had already been purchased. The reason it was different was they did a TV movie of it in the oh. 50s. It was purchased, and so the people who owned it from that then made... Their uh, their other movie, the Casino Royale movie yeah. that we were just talking about, um, after James Bond started becoming this big thing. Now, what what year was that Casino Royale? It's sixty seven. Okay, so James Bond was well established yes. by that point before they did a parody of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right, and then the 
I guess that's all I was going to say. So okay. there's a total of 26 movies. We're going to be talking about 25 of them, but there's only 24 official movies. Yes. So and so, if you don't count David Nevin, yeah. there have been six official Bond. So Bonds. never say never again is counted in this. In one. our ranking, in our ranking, ranking it is. Okay. But it's not an official Bond movie, right? Right. right. Because it, it wasn't. United it wasn't made by Eon. Right. Eon. That's it. Yeah. There's a movie in production right now that is Bond 25. That's what it's called. Guns didn't have a title. And again, if, according to our list, it would be the 26, but it's Bond 25 because Never Say Never Again is not canon. Right. It's right. not exactly counted. All right. So my 25th worst, the worst James one. Bond movie, in my opinion, is Die Another Day. Oh, okay. My 25th is Moonraker. And that's a lot of people's 25th. I've not seen that one, but I've heard a lot of people don't like that one. And Die Another Day is surprising because Jonathan Price Stop is a talking. villain. Are you kidding me? You can't okay. talk about him until oh, we hit him twice. It. Damn it! All right. Okay. So how are we writing these down for our so scoring? I've got I've got mine, and I'll put your numbers next to mine. Okay, good. So we'll have we'll have them together. All right. Okay. So, so my twenty fourth is never say never again. Okay. My twenty fourth was octopusy. What? Okay, we can't talk about it. We're talking about that one. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Um, now, are you ready to talk? Let's talk Moonraker. That's my 23. All right, my 23. No, 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 no. We'll talk Moonraker first. Okay. Yeah, because now that's been mentioned. All right. You, you've both got the ranking on it. It's definitely in your bottom three. <laughs> yeah, it's 24. It's ranked, tw it's ranked at 24, Kirk. And okay. even years ago when I was like, which ones should I watch? People would go, not Moonraker. Don't it, watch well, Moonraker. You know, you've yeah. got, you can't say with any confidence or any straight face at all that Roger Moore's James Bond movies are serious. No, <laughs> not at all. Cannot, Starting with Live, live and Let, let Die, die. Right? it's not serious. It's funny. It's complete, complete left turn. Goofy, but, but, but I've heard enjoyable. Moonraker goes over the well, line with like Jaws getting married, falling in love, right? which it, is bullshit. Now, Jaws is, is a great villain. No, we'll, he's we'll wonderful. Him more he's when we get to iconic. But, uh, but yeah, there's some, there's some absurdity in there. He fights an anaconda in this movie. Yeah. As one goes into space, there's space laser battles. <laughs> and what is a staple of James Bond movies? Very, very slow, large fights. Right. Yeah. They're super slow. But it's the late 70s, yeah. so they were it's, things were getting real yeah. goofy. And so you have all these space shuttles that yeah. are in space. You have the you have the villain space shuttles where they're going getting and the space station that was somehow yeah. made in secret out yeah. in outer right. space. That nobody no that nobody knew about. And right. the, the villain is is creating this master race of people that are yeah. gonna be able to propagate in the new God, that order. Because yeah. he's yeah. he's that developed really this nerve gas terrible. that'll only kill humans and leave the rest of the earth. Yeah, fine. But fine. it was the year it was the year after Star Wars, so if you want to capitalize space at race. the box office, yeah. that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. There's actually a Fleming book called Moonraker. I haven't read it. I don't know if it's the same story or not. Uh, yeah, a lot of them are not. <laughs> curious, curious. A lot of them. About a that. lot of them are just using titles or slight variations. Now we do. We have not talked yet about the song. Moonraker is a Shirley Bassey yeah. song. Now, and I actually like the song. She's very well known yeah. for yeah. doing three of the 26 <laughs> James Bond songs. Yeah, one of them is my favorite, and you don't we'll get to like it, it, but we'll get to it's that. Fine. I just I'm not a huge Shirley Bassey fan, so there's just nothing about this movie. The only the reason I honestly I forgot Never Say Never Again. But even once I remember Never Say Never Again, I still couldn't put it above Down of the Day. Like so, so Moonraker <laughs> moved up to 23 spots just because it's not those two. Right. That's why, right. It's, that's why it's so low for me. Okay. All right. So now you're 23rd. Okay, my num 23rd is Never Say Never Again. Okay, so let's talk Never Say Never Again. <laughs> Which, I, you know, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I can't wait because I bet it's just as good and Sean Connery, and boy, it was boring. Well, Sean Connery is actually kind of funny in the it's movie. Yeah. I enjoy, sh but the movie itself is no, really bad. Yeah. Sean and, Connery's always good, but the movies he's well, in is, are not always great. And it, it was released at the same time as Octopussy, so you've had these yeah. two competing James Bond movies out there. And um, it, it, it because... It's not made by Eon. It can't right. start out with the same kind of credit, so yeah. it even starts out different. Right. There's no nostalgia to it. Yeah. And it's just it's just awful. Yeah. And, 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 the, yeah. and the thing is, it, again, it copies Thunderball, which we'll talk about in a little bit, right. which is also not one of my personal favorites. Yeah. But they, and honestly, I think uh, Fiona Volpe, I think is the character's name. May not be hers. There's a, there's a mm -hmm. female rival of Bonds who's not bad in it. Yeah. yeah. But the plot is just so stupid. I love Thunderball, but yeah. we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll so talk never, I, honestly, I, I, I don't watch Never Say Never Again. I don't own it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know much about this one because I just. Well, you won't it. get it with the Eon collection of, you know, the, the criteria yep. thing. Whatever. All right, so it's time for my 22nd. Yep, 22. The Man with a Golden Gun. I thought you enjoyed really? that one. I enjoy all of these. They're all James Bond movies. Okay, fair enough. Okay, but number 22, A View to a Kill. And I've heard yep. that one's awful, despite uh, Christopher Walken and Grace Jones both. Yep. They're, they're nope. great actors. Uh, 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 mm, not uh, yet. Yeah, we we're not talking about it yet. My number 21. <laughs> and I know it's going to be a while before we talk about this one, just because 
Okay. This is, is going to blow people's minds. Yeah. Number 21, Goldfinger. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. That's where it was kind of born. I mean, Dr. No and, oh, and from Russia with one, Love again, first, It is the one that is thought of as the definitive James Bond movie. Yeah, that's where, where it all got, came together. Where started. Right. Yep. Yeah. 21, Die Another Day. All right, let's talk Die Another Day. <laughs> now, I wish I'd seen this one. No, you don't. No, you it, don't. it looks like a hoot with the media mogul and all that. It's, so here's the thing. It's like, it's you know, the Roger Moore movies don't take yeah. themselves seriously right. and they're humorous before that. Yeah. This one's funny, but not because it's knows it's funny. Oh, that's rough. It's funny because of how bad it is. Well, it contains, in my opinion, the worst CGI of all time in a movie. My, I, yeah. Mm, wow. I'll, I like, um, I like Pierce Brosnan as, he's one of my favorite oh, Bonds. He's the, one of the most He's my second favorite. But I don't like his movies very well because yeah. by the time they got to Pierce Brosnan, it's like they're running out of ideas and they were oh, going, that is true. they were going for these big budget um, CGI action movies without the stories to support it. And, and Halle That's Berry true. was written as his American equal. Yeah. As, her name is Jinx. Was, she was oh, the like the Felix girl. Leiter, but a woman. Uh, but no, she didn't. I mean, she was just an agent like he was. Okay. Whereas Felix has a little more of authority because he's kind of like the, the, lead, the lead of the Gotcha, movies. yeah. But she just... And it's not even... I don't blame the actress. I don't blame Halle Berry for this. She did what she could, but the yeah. director just didn't give her much direction. She's she's boring. She's bland. There's some fun set pieces. There's a guy who uh, we in the James Bond know called Diamond Face. There's a villain who has diamonds in his face. Wow. We call him Diamond Face. And then there's, there's, a, there's this really interesting opening scene in North Korea with hover cars. It's not bad, but... Uh, Pierce Brosnan gets a giant beard in the movie. Uh, uh, who plays Is this the one where he spends a year in, yeah, in, in captivity? In captivity. Yeah. Oh, I've caught, seen the beginning of this. He gets caught in North Korea. At the beginning, there's an exchange back. He comes back to the United States. And he, but um, there is uh, Miranda Frost is a character in this. And I forget who the actress is who plays her. She does a, a pretty good job. Do you have that in front of you? I have it in my stuff somewhere. Okay. Let me is find this, the... When he's in the jail, does M come and visit him? Yes. And she's like, I can get you out of Baldwin. But she, uh, Rosamund Pike. Rosamund Pike plays uh, Miranda Frost. Toby Stevens is the bad guy. Gustav Graves, he's like a megalomaniac. He creates Icarus, this laser that harnesses the power of sun and diamonds to shoot a giant laser at the Earth. And he's doing it so that his media company will, like... That's, that's Tomorrow Never Dies. So he... Oh, which it's, one it's are we on? Company. Which one are we're we on? We're talking about Dine of the Day. Oh, Dine of the Day. Scene. That's right. Me media mogul comes up in a little bit. <laughs> that's right. Dine another Day. He, he's a megalomaniac. I forget how he's, how he's trying... I forget what he's trying to even get out of it. I don't care. And that's care. Pierce Brosnan? Yeah, it's, his last, it's the last Pierce Brosnan. Well, shit, it was so, I didn't I mean, see that one either. It was so bad, Down of the Day, was that we didn't have a James Bond movie for quite a while. Until yeah, they until Daniel. Yeah, there, right. there was four years movie. between Die yeah. Another Day and Casino Royale. I thought it was more than that. It, it was only like four more. years. Yeah. The one that had the longest gap was between um, uh, um, uh, Daniel, not Daniel Craig, uh, between who was before Pierce? Oh, damn. The Timothy one that you like. Yeah, Timothy Dalton. Dalton. Yeah. And between License to Kill and Goldeneye yeah. was the biggest gap? Okay. Because there was a, there was a, um, uh, there was a sue. Yeah. They were being sued for yeah. some reason, Always. and so there was a six-year um, gap between *License to Kill*, which wow. was 1989, and *Goldeneye*, which was 1995. Um, and Timothy Dalton's contract to do six movies, six Bond movies, ran out during that time, mm -hmm. and so he he decided not to do anymore. Do you think they were running it out? Were they running no, his they, contract out? No, they were being no. sued by... Okay. I don't know what the suit was about, though. Yeah, I always forget. So that was your 21st, was down to the day. My 20 yeah. is For Your Eyes Only. For Your Eyes Only. Like that song? only. Um, we're not talking it unless he, unless he okay. does. My 20 was The World Is Not Enough. Okay. Really? Okay. My 19 is The World Is Not Enough. <laughs> right. I love that one. The there are is not honestly, it enough. would be much higher. But garbage sings the theme song. I do like the theme. song. I love that song. But there is one fatal flaw in this movie. What's that? The Bond Girl. Oh, Christmas it? Jones, played by uh, it went, uh, Lucy Liu. What? No, 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 Lucy, it's not no Lucy, Lucy, Liu. Lucy Liu wasn't in any of. You're thinking of uh, uh, Michelle Yeoh, I think. In uh, Toronto. that's that's it's, what it was. Uh, oh gosh, that, I can't think of her name. Denise Richards. Denise Richards plays. Oh, the Bond Girl, she Christmas was. Jones. Wasn't Famke Jansen in that one? She was in Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah, the world yeah like, Denise Richards was awful in that one. She is so bad. Again, I blame the director because, you know, unless she's just the worst actress of all time, you should have been able to work, you know, make her better. But it, it is 
atrocious. Is, that's the one with the tank battle, though. Gold it, the big, is that Gold Nile? Shit. So. The world's not I don't remember anything so about that. It's not about an oil pipeline. The oil though, pipeline, right? exactly. Yeah. There's a, a woman who we think is uh, going to be the Bond girl yeah. in the beginning, and her dad dies. He's an oil tycoon. She's trying to make it, take it over, make things better. We're following oh, her. Yeah. He's trying to protect her. Yeah. Yeah. There's an avalanche suit, one of the worst Bond gadgets of all time. <laughs> you know, that was just with the point where they designed Bond gadgets yeah. solely for the one thing they were going to need it for in that episode. Right. And it's just, and she was caught in an avalanche. She, she's terrified. She was kidnapped as a kid. Turns out she's the she's bad guy. She's the bad guy. guy, yeah. I remember and that. She twist. was really good in it. Yeah, I I, and the I other liked villain, that one. I enjoyed that one. The other villain, I, I forget I forget his name, he has this brain damage where he had a bullet in his head. Oh that yeah. shut off all his pain sensors. Yeah, that's right. And and he is like the final boss essentially that Bond has to fight in the submarine nuclear reactor is gonna go off. Crazy stuff's happening. But if I'm not mistaken, that guy's kinda whiny and bitchy throughout. He's like emo. To an extent, he's, because yeah. he can't feel. He's like he holds the lighter up to his hand, and he's yeah. like, "I can't feel pain." And she you're rub, like, "Shut up!" She rubs ice on him, and she like he can't even get aroused. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that I don't would think the actor suck. did a That'd bad job. That'd give me a shitty attitude. I don't too. think the actor did a bad job because again, you're playing someone who can't feel really. <laughs> right. But uh, but until when she when she's killed by um, by Bond, uh, then he kind of goes into like berserk mode. The other villain does. Yeah. So I, again, I don't hate the movie. It would be higher because I like a lot about it. Except for Denise Richards is so atrocious. Yeah, she's bad in that. <sighs> Alright. So Do you have anything to add to that, Jeff? About no. the awfulness of it? I just didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I haven't it. It I haven't favorite, seen I, it. I haven't seen a lot of these movies in a while, like like right. you. you no, it's but been years. I, I remember how I feel about them. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I don't remember anything about Thunderball. I just remember I liked it. You know, there are just some that I really enjoyed. All right, that was my number 19. That was your number 19, so I'm doing my number 19 now. Tomorrow Never Dies was my number With 19. With Jonathan Price. Yep. Yep. We'll get to that one in a little Which, bit. Oh, wait, I thought... <laughs> I haven't said that one yet. You didn't say Tomorrow Never Dies nope. yet? No, oh, which okay. we got a little ways before I get, I get okay. to that one. Okay. My number 18 is Thunderball. All right. My number 18 is For Your Eyes Only. Okay, let's talk for your oh, eyes. Your eyes are, and that's all I remember from it's that movie. It's a great song. and a, See, I love that song. And a crappy movie. And it's, uh, what, 83, 82, 81? Oh, 81. It, it's for 1981. 81, yeah. It was, it's popular. I went to England at this time. It's also around the time of the royal wedding and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I remember seeing all the signs for the movie in in, in London, but right, I didn't like see it in London. For it. And the song was popular. I and when I finally got to see the movie, I was kind of, oh, this what? is really bad. What is it about? I don't even remember. I don't remember. I, so, I, I remember a little bit of this woman whose parents are killed in Greece, and she's on a quest for revenge, but I remember what she's doing better than what Bond's doing. Because I don't even remember the villain in it. Like, it's just, I remember yeah. the, the scene where, like, the, the image on the poster is a Bond in, like, a pool, and you see these women's legs going up, and then, like, yeah. she's. I, I, I That's all I remember. I remember nothing, I don't, I remember else nothing about from it. it. It's so forgettable, in my opinion. Well, for your eyes only, the, the villain was. Synopsis Aristotle Christostos, played Christados. by Julian Glover. Yeah. Christados, yeah. He wants to retrieve the attack missile command system from the Soviet Union and trick Bond. Obviously. Um, Bond joined forces with M Milos Colombo, irritating Chris, infil wait, infiltrating wait, wait, wait. the hideout. This was the one that had, I think, the guy from, uh, I should know, you're going to hate me for Tevia. Oh, Topol. Yeah, I think Topol was in this one. The Maybe. None of this rings think, a bell I think whatsoever. He played the, I think he played Bond's None friend. I'm going to look it up real fast while Jeff has nothing else to say because we have nothing to say about, <laughs> yeah. about None of us for remember your eyes it. only. And that's, that's really telling, isn't it? You could yep. have... A Carol, Carol Bouquet played the Bond girl, um, Melina Havelock, and Topol played Milos Colombo, the Bond the Bond friend. Very cool. Mm -hmm. That's Topol would be a good Bond friend. Yeah. I, f I faintly remember Topol in this. Mm -hmm. uh, just an image of him... In the movie, it's probably I'm just imagining it and don't actually remember anything. Well, if you've seen the movie once, you've and that seen was it. it more than you need to. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know, that's the, see, there's movie. the difference between something like Moonraker, which is stupid and goofy and awful, but you remember it. Mm -hmm. you I know. remember it being I don't stupid like and goofy Moon, and awful. I don't like Moonraker, and it's a lower on my thing than this, right. but I'd watch Moonraker again. Yeah, just don't <laughs> bore me. Don't give me something I don't care about and won't remember and that's, Well, that's the thing is, it. I put it a little... Lower on mine because I don't remember hating it. 
Whereas some of the other ones, like, I actively remember disliking things <laughs> right. from them. But I like the song. Yeah. Just, and so it's that pushes favorites. the movie up there on my list. <laughs> that goes a long way with me. I'll listen to that song. It's a yeah, great Bond. Day. It's a great Bond yeah. song. And some of the Bond songs aren't, but that's a great one. Yeah, not all of them are. All right. So that was 18. your number 18. I said my number 18, Thunderball. My number 17 is Spectre. My number 17 is License to Kill. We won't be talking about that one for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand your. You know how your, you know how I like know Dolph how you like Timothy honestly, Dalton. And I don't get it. Most I don't people understand it. would have put it lower than Jeff did. Yeah, like honestly, Jeff gave it a more favorable ranking than most would. I just really liked Dalton. Yeah. So that was your number seventeen. Yep. My number sixteen is on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Oh, oh, I didn't see yeah. that's the George Lazenby. It is. Yeah. I never saw that one. Either. My number sixteen is the Man with the Golden Gun. Okay. The Man the with the, the Golden, Golden Gun. Gun. Who sings it? Uh, you know? I don't. Lulu. 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 Right. I love her, though. I love Christopher Lee. with love. Christopher Lee is great in it, and I enjoy saying the word Scaramanga. Scaramanga. It's the Scaramanga. best It's the best name of a Bond villain ever, Ooh, because knick-knack. it's Scaramanga. What, Nick knack Nick knacks <laughs> okay, but Scaramanga. Scaramanga gets a line where he just screams, Nick knack Tabasco! <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's and <laughs> is Nick knack the little Hervé yes, Leches? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. gets the final the fight Bond <laughs> in the uh, cabin of a boat. And he, co- he drops down with a knife in his teeth, and Bond, puts him up, <laughs> Bond ties him up and puts him up in the crow's nest. That like, was know, the suitcase. funniest thing ever. So what was your ranking for The Man with the Golden Gun? 22. Wow. And good. this one suffered for kind of the same reason that uh, The World's Not Enough suffered. I just find the Bond girl atrocious. I, th- I thought Man with the Golden Gun was a little sloppier. I, I like so. I love the, the when he gets to the island with mm-hmm. Christopher Lee. I think that's great. There are I moments. Think most of what happens before that is really boring. It to me, it seems very simple. It's an oversimplification of a Bond yeah. plot, where it's like this guy's trying to kill you. Okay, let me Brit go Eklund. kill him, and Brit that's Eklund the movie. Plays the the very good night in that. She no, you have now Maude Adams. Maud Adams, someone, yeah. But she she actually dies early on before she was an octopus. Like she's, oh, in yeah, this, she's, she's, she's in this too. Movie. Yeah, that, a, that happens a couple times in Bond movies where the same actor played different characters in multiple movies. She plays um, like a female helper of his who dies, I think, in a is it a sumo match threat or a boxing match or something like that. But Christopher Lee was great in this as, as uh, Scaramanga, just an assassin who yeah. oh he was hired, great uh, to kill with one shot. He built it. He had his own bullets made. The island is is a beautiful uh, sight. And then when they go through like the horror house, the fun house, where they're oh like, yeah, doing mm-hmm. that. And, I don't hate the movie. I just really dislike Brett Eklund, and it's not one I want to watch, even yeah. though I like some of the performances. But it does have a fun song. <laughs> yeah, I like the song. Okay, so that was your number 16. Yep. My number 15, it's time to talk View to a Kill. All right. View to this a is one Kill. That is completely, right right. This one is completely absurd. One. Not as much as I like the next one by AHA, but I like, that was actually before. I like the Duran Duran That one. was actually before. AHA was before that one? No. AHA came after. Yeah. AHA was a Timothy View- Dalton one. Oh, you're right. Let me yes, View to a Kill was Roger Moore's right, last right, one in 1985. Yeah, so View to a Kill... I thought they are both bad Bond songs, oh, but... I like them both. I like, view to I like a Kill, I, I, like I like better. Like AHA, uh-huh, I thought, was a terrible See, song. I like, oh, I like that one better than Duran Duran. I like that better, Duran Duran. too. I like yeah. that one better. View to a Kill, we'll talk that. Uh, Christopher Walken is the villain. And I've seen a bits and pieces of this one. Yeah. I've young seen Chris bits and pieces, great. and it's freaking terrible. It's oh, awful. I don't hate it. I don't, I, I don't it. like it. It is one that is often thought of as a terrible one. Yeah. Roger Moore is getting really old. It's kind of creepy. It's his last girls. one. Yeah. He's fifty-seven when he is yeah. in that movie. Yeah, he was aging out of that. Running role. up and down the the um, Eiffel Tower, Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, yeah. and the, on the Golden Gate Bridge. The weirdest, chasing. yeah, the weirdest oh. uh, assassin, yeah. Grace Jones, Grace is, Jones is the bodyguard yeah. of Christopher. Yeah. She assassinates a guy using butterflies. Yes. On like a fishing pole. Like yeah. It's like a razor sharp butterfly. And there's this butterfly performance show going on. It's really strange. <laughs> People are like eating at these tables, like at a nice like restaurant. Yeah. And there's this, someone doing these weird butterfly dances. And Grace Jones is up in a balcony. She gets a fish pot and she like razors a guy in the neck with a butterfly <laughs> and then runs off. <laughs> It's, uh, that that wouldn't even work, really, nope, scientifically, nope, would it? Absolutely no reason. Tanya Roberts yeah, is the Bond weird. girl in this. And oh, she was doing okay for a she while. She was fine. She was fine. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I like some of it. And there's this weird horse bit where... Uh, that was terrible. I've seen that. It Christopher was awful. Walken's, Christopher Walken is using, like, horse adrenaline steroids yeah. on people. And yeah. like, that's where Grace Jones comes from. Let me show you there's my horse. Awkward, awkward... Uh, it's right here in the stable. Grace Jones, Roger Moore bed scene... I the, forget how old Tanya Roberts was in this. The shame of it was, though, a mm. fight at, on a Zeppelin at the end of it. That's a cool set piece. 
I think, that was pretty neat. I think Grace Jones yeah. was like 20 something when she was supposed to be yeah, a Bond Yeah, she was girl. fairly young, yeah. Most of the Bond girls are like in their like 20s. In their early but it 20s, makes yeah. it so awkward with how old Roger Moore was. Exactly. Well, <laughs> and James Bond's supposed to be somewhere between 35 and 45. Yeah, always. Always. Always for the history yeah. of it, yeah. And so, so I think part of my problem with, well, I know that part of my problem with you to Akil was that James Bond is just too old to be Bond anymore. Yeah. He's just. Mm. You're not buying it. I'm not buying it. Yeah. But several of his last movies I felt that way about. But we were only talking about a view to go. Now, the Duran sure. Duran song, it, I think it's one of the better Duran Duran songs. I agree with that. I don't. With a view to a I don't really I like Duran Duran. I think no, they, they were a mediocre band that got big because they had videos when MTV started. That was and so largely the, it. And they were handsome and intelligent. And so people loved them because they saw them on MTV all the time. But their right. songs. For the most part, suck. They suck. Um, and so, even "Hungry Like the Wolf." If you uh, listen to it, you go, "Oh, this! I was wrong about this. Yeah. This is awful." So, yeah. so uh, their song "View to a Kill," it's okay. It's better than some of the Bond songs, but it's it's not on my. It's yeah. not up there for me. I don't think their song "Wild Boys" ever got to do <laughs> that. It should have "Wild Boys." <laughs> Wild boys. I, mean, I like Rio. I find Rio very catchy. That's eh, okay. "Hungry Like a Wolf." Ah, uh, sucks. That is the <laughs> like shittiest song. I like. I probably only know it because I was on my rock band when I was playing rock band. Yeah, probably. I enjoyed that one. And that might be why I hate it because I got tired of singing it. I was like, I'm not doing. I'm not doing this again. I'm not singing "Hungry Like the Wolf" again. So that was my number fifteen, Jeff. What is your number fifteen? My number fifteen is Goldeneye. Okay. I like Goldeneye. Oh, we're not allowed to talk about nope. it yet, are we? It'll be a little bit. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk. My number fourteen. It's time to talk. Tomorrow never dies. All right. Hey, who's in that one, Ron? Jonathan Price is the bad guy. <laughs> he is. And he's great. Medium he's a Oak, great he's, actor. It's an, it's an actor. odd plot. He's trying to make Britain and China go to war. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's by right. By manipulating GPSs. So there's like these crossovers. He's kidnapping um, submarines from each of them with his media money. Right. And making them like go to war so he can broadcast it. And make money off the wall. Yeah, that's what I understood it was. He's uh, The only reason he's trying to do it is so that he can cover the story. Yep, yep. that's it. Yeah, that's that really is kind of dumb. Isn't I, it? But, yeah, but I like the song, Cheryl Crow, Tomorrow Never Dies. It's not one of the most popular ones, but I enjoy yeah, it's it. Okay. I don't think it really works as a Bond song. There's some voices. I, I was uh, Yesterday I, I was listening to all the Bond songs, yeah. and yeah. there are some voices that just don't have the same gravitas that you kind of need for the Bond song. Then. And I like I like Sheryl Crow otherwise. It's more of a croonery kind of song, yeah. like some of the older ones yeah. were, but not so much the, of, of its time when they right. were, were powerful. I like uh, Terry Hatcher plays a small role in it. Oh, she's good. Like she's good at yeah. Bond. And Michelle Yeoh, I think you're thinking Lucy Liu. Michelle That's Yeoh probably it. is the Bond girl who's like his equal, um, I think from the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. Ricky Jay has a moment in it. It's pretty funny. The car, the magician? Mm -hmm. No shit. Yeah. Have you ever seen his? No. His, but holy crap! Mm -hmm. You know, you know, magic's fake. But he's one of them where you go, he's skilled. He's skilled in every yeah. way possible. Ricky J was amazing. Mm -hmm. He's passed away now, but he's great. Uh, there's a a Bond like the the henchman. You know, they've always got these henchmen. Right. There's one named Stomper. 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 I forget. He's some sort of like I think he's German or something like that. And he's just like pure man kind of. Right. Thing. We'll, we'll <laughs> to, solid. Yeah. He he's, he harkens back to <laughs> Red Grant. From, from Russia with Love. Uh, uh, yeah. Robert Shaw. Yeah, Robert Shaw. Yeah. yeah. Again, I liked Wonder Dies. It's one that I will watch. It's very watchable. It's very yeah. dumb. But it's one that I kind of get swept up in. There's a lot of Bond movies like that that are really stupid, but you, you, you get swept up. Oh, again, I like Pierce. I like the Pierce Brosnan mm, Bond. I it's agree. just, it's like they ran out of good stories and they're just. Which is a shame because Pier Pierce Brosnan was great for that role. He was. He was. And, you know, he's. The most Connery of the other yeah. Bonds, yeah. Um, and, but he's smoother and suaver, and he's kind of the perfect person to cast in that role. And but I don't really he care for. To, he was supposed to take over when Timothy Dalton did it. I know, but he yeah. couldn't get I out couldn't of, get of a... Moonlighting. No, no, no Moonlighting. Uh, Remington, Remington Steel. Remington Steel, Steel, Steel yeah. yeah. Which which the producers of that produced Moonlighting. Yeah, too. Uh, um, Glenn Gordon Caron. Okay, so that was my number fourteen. Okay, my number fourteen is The Living Daylights. Yeah, I've seen clips of that. I didn't. I couldn't watch it. I could not continue to watch. <clears throat> uh, We're not talking Timothy about that one yet. About that oh one yet. wait, Living Daylights. <laughs> My number thirteen. Sorry, I, I'm really hoping we agree on one of them. Like, I hope uh -huh. we get the same number on something because we haven't been very. We've gotten some that were kind of close. Uh -huh. My number thirteen is Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, mine is Thunderball. Well, let's talk Thunderball. <laughs> 
I like Thunderball. That was my number 18. Thunderball has the slowest fight scene of all time. In the underwater, underwater, fight underwater fight scene, I love that. He's so like, slow. I'm going to rip off your mask now. It's also, you won't be able to breathe underwater. Isn't, isn't Thunderball the one where they also have this toboggan scene or... Uh, like or am I thinking uh, of a different movie? Uh, Thunderball, don't they have like they're fighting like on a bobsled? A bobsled, or I don't, remember I don't recall that, that either. I know there's a lot of skiing things that happen. I know there's, maybe there's a lot of skiing maybe in a, James Bond. Maybe it's a exactly. snowmobile thing. I don't, yeah, there's a lot of those in different movies. Snowmobile. I don't think that was Thunderball. I yeah. think I think that was True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, I'm I'm remembering explosions in the snow, but but True Lies was good. <laughs> Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, I, I like the villain in Thunderball. I think yes. he's really good. I forget the name of the actor. I'm going to look that up. And I think Domino is one of the most beautiful Bond girls of all time. Um, oop. Uh, the It was Emilia Largo, played by Adolfo Selly, was in Thunderball. And there's yeah. also Ernest Stavro Blofeld yeah, by Anthony was, Dawson, mm -hmm. but voiced by Eric... Pullman. That There's was a lot Blofeld's of first appearance, wasn't it, in the Bond films? Uh, no. From what? Russia with Love, we was okay. Blofeld's first appearance. Yeah, I, I, I think Largo's great. Uh, I think Domino's gorgeous. I find almost everything about this movie horribly boring. <laughs> I like, I like it. It's one of my. It's up there for me. And it is. Well, I don't know. You're in. You're in like the halfway. Well, it, um, it is. So... I, it was for him. For me, it was not. For me, it was eighteen. So for yeah. me, it was in the, in the bottom half. And which he number were we on? 14? 14? 14, yeah. yeah. That, well, that was your 13th, I thought. No, but it was whatever number yeah, we were Yeah, you said 14 was Living Daylights for you. 13, yeah, 13 is Thunderball, Thunderball yeah. Yeah, it so it's like halfway, right? Thunderball would have been in my top five. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's well, just, again, I picked some in my, my top five that you would have put at the bottom. Yeah, it's just you know what you enjoy is different for everybody. And it would have been Ron from fifteen now, years I will ago say this, that would have ranked. Thunderball it has, if you oh. want to go with Q gadgets, one of the greatest Q gadgets of all time. What what was it? I think it was called Little Nelly. It was the oh, jetpack. Yeah. Oh, the jetpack! Yeah. It's the opening scene. He's getting away. I, I don't know if you people some vehicles, uh, you know, Q gadgets, whatever right. you want to call it, one thing or the other. It's got a pretty cool one. That, and that's that his one. fourth movie, right? Mm -hmm. Thunderball oh, is yeah, yeah. number four. Yeah. 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 So, all right, Thunderball. There we go. And next up, um, for me, number twelve, the Spy Who Loved Me, which is another one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Oh, it's a great that's, song. That's in my top. Um, right number there, twelve for me is Diamonds Are Forever. Okay, we were really close on Diamonds that one. We were are only one ranking. That's but, one of Ron's but favorite song. You have to give it. To it is a great song. Diamonds are forever for having uh, an openly gay yep. villain couple yeah. in that one, and that was that was back Mr. in that White day. Yep. Mr. Mr. Despite Mr. them being Mr. villains, they were gay people being uh, shown on. But film. they made them incredibly awkward. Yeah, like, they made yeah. them so unpleasant, but not flamboyant. No, which not flamboyant. Was the cool thing they, they weren't that's flamboyant. A common, a common thing in a lot of the early James Bond movies was people who are weird are. Homosexual, like there are yeah, there are a lot yeah. of those undertones for like lesbians yeah. and yeah. I mean uh, I think this is the first time you see an openly male gay group, but you have some right. women that you're kind of suspicious of earlier than that. Sure, uh, even in From Us with Love, and then in um, oh uh, there was oh in uh, Skyfall. Uh -huh. You have a hint that the villain might be homosexual. Well, that's well. pretty cool. It's it's a subtle thing, and and James Bond just kind of like. Man's up right through and just and just like what, what makes you think I I haven't tried that before? It's a oh like, diamonds are forever. Oh diamonds are forever also has Bambi and Thumper. Yeah, female yeah, yeah. like fighting henchmen, which you don't often get where they're like an equal match for Bond kind yeah, of. Yeah, but no, that was a cool movie. I like that. They're one. They're fighting with him in a pool or a hot tub or something yeah. like that. And they push. There two of them push his head under the water. Then he easily Somehow, gets away well, from sure, that. Just it. one hand on each of their right. hands and pushes them. Right. It's Roger when, Moore, though. It's when, dumb. No, it's, no, 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 it's the was, final Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Wait a minute. Are we, Diamonds are forever? Yeah. 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 I thought that one was... He had taken a break and well, so he came I'll back. Well, I'll be goddamn. That's so when he came back. So wrong. Because they offered him whatever he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. He had left and then they, they had George... There's a moon buggy chase in this one. Yeah. And then then after that movie, they the the studio told... To producers that they had, they wanted Sean Connery regardless of what the cost. Right. Well, I mean, shit. this one had another, in my opinion, one of the worst Bond girls of all time. Uh, Tiffany Case, played by Jill St. John. Beautiful. Yeah. Horribly annoying. I don't remember her. But the movie is just so fun. I don't really care. It's got Lana Wood as Plenty O'Toole. Yeah. Plenty yeah, O'Toole. That's O'Toole. right. That's what. And my. Uh, Jimmy Dean's in this. My old buddy Sid Hagen. I know. In this one. Jimmy Dean is in it. And he plays Willard yeah. Watt. Willard Watt. I don't remember that character. He's oh, a, yeah. He's a tycoon he's in a Vegas, big, I think. He's a big... He's been kidnapped by Blofeld. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Bruce Glover how, is how Mr. How many Wins all in all were Blof, was Blofeld 
the man. I'm not talking about the one where he like drops him into the chimney. That's right. you know, uh, that's, only. that's, that's like a cameo, yeah. yeah, kind of thing. But I'm talking he was a bad guy in a Bond film. Uh, most of them, because for a long time, Blofeld he's almost was never, the man. Well, he's, he was the the head, but usually there was a sub person in the organization. Right, who was, who was he was Spectre. He was yeah. number one Inspector. Yeah, and then there'd be like number two or number three or number four who was like right. the, the villain of that episode or movie. Which Austin Powers made fun of by calling. Number two, his number henchman two number two, yeah. He was in five of the movies until he was brought back in the most recent movie. And that's a good run. Charles Gray played him in Diamond But it Rider. wasn't always the same actor. And, the, yeah, no, 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 Charles, Charles, Charles Gray, Gray was my who favorite. was the uh, and narrator in, in Rocky Horror Picture Show back then. He the plays Bl Blofeld in Diamond Rider. He's probably my favorite Blofeld. And Telly Savalas played him once. Yes, he, he did. Moon, it, was it Moonraker? It's one of them I haven't seen. I think it might be... You only live twice, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, it was on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Oh, okay. And that's, I have not seen that one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how was he as a Bond villain? That's, he's not bad in that one. No? He's all right? Nope. Yeah. Have you? There's a documentary about George Lazenby and how he got the job. Yeah, uh, it's called Becoming Bond. He was a model. Yeah. It's great, yeah. but we haven't we have got to that movie yet. Story. Yeah, yeah we, we haven't gotten to the documentary. Agree. Yet. Man, this is hard. For we Ron. haven't agreed oh, on Her Majesty's Secret uh, yeah. Service. We haven't gotten. Having, I know Ron having, wants to talk having about having an organized system of talking about things is not easy for Ron. <laughs> right. to, uh, it's tough for me because I like to just jabber on. I do too. That's why I thought this might be an interesting way because I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to keep tally of numbers. And we do have some ties so far. It's your damn rules. Yeah, you know me and my rules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we have a tie on our number nine. Uh, we have a, two that are ranked 19 right now. Yeah, okay. So we can, we can come back to that once we finish going through okay. these one by one. Okay. So we talked about your number, number 12. 12. So my, uh, my number 12 we already did. My number 11, it's time to talk Octopussy. Oh, I love really? Octopussy. You Octopussy had, is number 11. You had oh, come on. See, I'm with Jared on that. I'm team Jared on oh, this one, Jeff. You had that I'm one sorry. At 24. Yeah, it's one of the worst ones in my opinion. I thought the story was cool. It's, it's a fun. cool story about the Fabergé egg. Yeah. And then the, the, oh, the no. Circus. That was great. The circus. The part. circus. You like oh, the circus? Oh, so much. I do. Roger so Moore fun. running around in that and red he, shirt with his fat belly hanging over his belly. He lands, he <laughs> lands his airplane like on the highway or whatever he does. I don't remember, but it was great. Maude Adams is amazing. Well, Maude Adams She's is amazing. Great, I love Octopussy. Uh, it's got a great song, too. Well, it does yeah, have what a is, song. What is that song? Uh, um, is this Rita Coolidge? Yes. Uh, yes, what is the song? Gosh, I have to pull up my, my music. It's, it has nothing to do with the words Octopussy. Oh, it's... Um, all Time High. All, all Time High. And all Time High. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I love that. Um... I do think the villain is a little underwhelming. He's fine. But I, I, one of the most beautiful women who I think was ever in a Bond movie, uh, Christina Wayborn played Magda, like a uh, henchwoman. Yeah. She was gorgeous. Steven, Steven Burkhoff, Burkhoff played, played the Orlov. main bad guy, right? Uh, he played one of them. He played a general. He Orlov. wasn't the main bad guy. The main guy. bad guy was uh, Louis Jor Jordan. Yeah. Kamal. Yeah, that's was, right. Rita Coolidge sang the song. Yeah. Yeah. And it's written by John Barry, Tim Rice, and Stephen mm -hmm. Short. Yeah, Stephen Burkhoff had his uh, Beverly Hills Copy was the bad guy and First Blood Rambo 2. He was the bad guy. Will you scream? There's he a, was great. I in, love the, him. in the vein of <laughs> vein. Uh, <laughs> we'll go back to that in a second. Yeah. Of uh, weird, horrible women names in this. Yeah. Uh, Michaela Clavel played Penelope Smallbone. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope Smallbone. Yep. Sorry, oh Penelope. God. Yeah. You're just how God made you. Mm -hmm. Talk I, about uh, objectifying women and giving them. Yeah, but there's a, but, a whole plenty of tools. There is a death. There is a death. There is a death by favorites. octopus in this. Yes. There's a blue ring yeah, octopus. That yeah. Another great Q gadget. Uh, Bond goes underwater in a crocodile. Like, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> emerges. That was awesome. Yeah. I, lo I love even the beginning with the clown Age and he's running death, away with the it's egg. Nine, I think, and it's killed. so spy movie-ish. Yeah. It's such a There's a, a casino a scene, a good casino scene where Kamal is, uh, I don't know if it's crap so he's playing with these, his own dice and they're clearly yeah. loaded. Yeah, so Bond, yeah, Bond, Bond goes in. Bond plays, it says... Uh, player's choice and he uses the same die and, and beats him or ties him that's or right like that. and then the, the henchman i think his name's gobinder gobinder or something like that gobinder he, he picks up the the dice and crushes the dice in his yes head. i love so that you know moment. how strong he is i find octopus really fun i do too i'm not claiming it's a, a, great a great movie it. but again it's of the but right era where i can i can give away there's nothing in it that is unforgivable for me right no whereas the, I, some I other ones have like it. a terrible woman or something like right that. No, I like Octopus. And it, that was the first Bond movie I'd ever seen. I was a kid, yep. and I had it recorded on VHS from a TV. Now, well, it is the worst, of it, it so is the it's, worst it's kind of name spot. of a movie. Well, well, yeah, Octopussy is an awful <laughs> title. Well, let I me give you my Octopussy ask. story. Go for okay. it. Okay, so it's my first year in college when it came out, 1983. Yeah. I have just moved to Boston. I was there for like a month or maybe two months by the time it came out. Yeah. And, you know, it was in a different part of Boston, and I didn't want to go, I didn't know where this place was. I didn't want to go there by myself. Right. 
I couldn't find a single person in my dorm who wanted to go see the movie. So I had... I was going knocking on everybody's huh. door, room door, and there wasn't a single person who wanted to go see the movie with me. Some of the excuses was I only have enough money to get drunk this weekend. I, and that's legit. And so, that's totally legit. And so finally, it was the first time I ever did this, and after that, I didn't ask anyone if they wanted to do anything with me again. I just would go out and do it. So the, I just went and found the movie theater and went and saw the movie by myself. Yeah, I've done that. And so maybe, so maybe I, that clouds my judgment about the movie. I, might, I, I probably might. enjoyed the movie at the time, but I don't think it's a great movie. But um, I'm I not, Again, I, you don't hear me arguing it's a great movie. It's yeah. one of the ones I enjoy a yeah, lot. Yeah, I know. And yeah. we'll watch regularly yeah, I, I if, enjoy it's, that one a if lot. it's on TV. And, so and was, I enjoy going to the movies by myself. That bothers me I, not see, one I bit. Well, I, I do that a lot. Yeah. It was the fact, I was from a small mining town in Creed. Right. So living in a city and going out on the subway at night to the prior to the city I'd never been in that I'd sure. just moved to. No, that's nerve-wracking. That's, 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 that's kind of a nerve-wracking nerve yeah. thing to do. And yeah. after that, I went everywhere by myself. I didn't bother asking anyone anymore. It's like, okay, oh, enough with you guys. How do you keep them down on the farm? Fuck y'all. After they've been bossed. Yeah, fuck you guys. I'm going to the movies. I'm going to the movies. I'm going wherever I want to go. I'm I going saw the by Green myself. Mile by myself. So it was like me, a couple that was, you know, way on down another row and a couple that was like several rows back. And then near the end of the movie, it's three pods of sniffing people. <laughs> like we're all crying in our own little yeah. private area during the Green well, Mile. To be honest, most of the movies I've ever seen, especially in the movie theater, I've seen by myself. And no, and it's a majority. I Mo I can't, I'm not, the majority I'm not of movies that I, you know, I've, I've gone to movies with other people, but mostly I've gone to movies by myself. If I'm no with kidding. other people, I have a tendency to talk. If I'm by myself, I won't. Oh, that's, yeah. And no one gets bothered by my horrible jaw popping over and over. over <laughs> As you're eating popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was my number 11. Jeff, what's your number 11? Okay, let me get back to that yep. the paper. <laughs> my number 11 is On Her Majesty's Secret okay, Service. Okay, it's time to talk On Her Majesty's yeah, Secret get, Service. Speaking of George Lazenby. Uh, okay, finally, you get the, to talk about The it. Becoming Bond film is very funny, and Lazenby... Uh, la you talk about somebody w with just balls. Just yep. balls to go in and go... I'm not an actor. I've never done this. And I know the nothing. Whole movie. The whole movie has is a lot of balls. Yeah. Because Bond falls in love and gets married. Yep. Tracy no, Bond. No shit. I knew. And then well, she gets murdered at the end. There's yeah. a scene in the later movies where he's at the graveside visiting yeah. his yeah. wife. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember the mo what movie. Honor Majesty's Secret sure it was Service has a lot going Honor for Majesty's it. But it's just, it's just such a different tone that I yeah. took off a little bit because it's so different than the other ones. It's right. also the only James Bond Theme song that isn't sung besides the first one. It has two. It's on instrumental. The... Just totally yeah, it's instrumental. just it's totally instrumental. Yeah. There are sung songs in it. There's a song I think over the closing credits by Louis Armstrong. Right. The, but it's oh, yeah, but it's not the not theme song. Right. The theme song the because at this time they were they wanted the the name of the movie as a lyric in the song mm -hmm. and they couldn't figure out any way to to write a lyric that had on Her Majesty's huh. Secret Service in it. So John Barry decided, okay, well, we'll we won't have any lyrics. We'll just have music, yeah. and that was a smart decision. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great song, um, but it's the only one besides the original from Doctor No that doesn't have a that yeah. someone's not. There's a, a it's Blofeld's plot in this one is very strange. He has a health clinic where he's yeah. bringing people to like cure them of like allergies and things like that, but he's brainwashing them uh -huh. to become like sleeper agents, and he's going to send them back out into the world and take over the world. But he's, he's also the arming them with like perfume that has something to... Nerve some agent. Some nerve agent to spray on So people. they're just throwing in the kitchen sink on this it's, one. It is. It's, isn't this movie the, also the one with one. the two women, Thumper and... Ba no, ba Bambi and Thumper is Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, okay, that was yeah. Diamonds Are Forever. Yeah. Okay. But this is the one where, where he goes into... He goes to this allergy clinic, and it's filled with all these women. Yes. And, yeah, Irma Bunt and some of the other women that are in that. That's it's, funny. It's, it's actually it's actually definitely worth a watch. And I don't find, I enjoy it. I don't yeah. find a lot of problems with Lazenby's performance. Like I know he's not yeah. an actor first off. Like he, right. he's, he's a model who took on James Bond, but fine. He did a fine job. And he just doesn't look Bondish. It's just to me. not. That was it's my not thing. fun. Yeah. But it's also not serious enough for me to get into it. Like, right. It's, it's kind of in the middle ground for me. Well. When he was trying to get the part, uh -huh. he actually went to Sean Connery's um, barber and had yeah, him do yes, his hair. That's he right, went, I that. he went to his tailor, tailor and his got tailor, yeah. and picked up some suits that <coughs> Sean Connery hadn't bothered to pick up that's after he right. ordered them. He just he got lucky with that. He got so damn lucky. <laughs> Sometimes it's being the right in the yeah. right place at the right time. That's a perfect example of it. And he turned it down when he was offered the next film, didn't he? 
Yeah, he because he he oh, the next one's he, when they brought Roger. Or well, brought, that's when they brought Sean Connery. So like no, they, no, they brought Sean Connery back for, for the diamonds for, are forever. For diamonds are forever. But okay. the reason he turned it down is they never signed a contract with him during the first movie. The negotiations just kept going yeah. on and on. And his a manager told him that going into the seventies that because Bond was such the uh, womanizer guy that he didn't think there was much future in. In the role <laughs> because of, because of women's lib right yeah. and so yeah. George made the choice that he didn't want to continue with it. Way to go, George! Yeah, and has he ever done anything else? No, I don't think hell so. no. There was a documentary about him. Now I'm surprised you haven't said this one yet because we're getting my number okay. ten now. I'm very surprised you haven't said this. One. I thought Quantum of Solace would be lower for you, but Quantum of Solace is my number ten, and I and I was the one early on in this podcast, not this episode, but in our podcast yeah. career, saying how much I like that one. And I own that one. I and a lot of people don't it. think very highly of it, but that's my number 10. Okay. I need to see that one. My number 10 is You Only Live Twice. Okay. My number 9 is Live and Let Die. Live and Let Die. My number 9 is The Spy Who Loved Me. Let's talk The Spy Who Loved Me. You know, all I remember about like that one is that song. Me. And the, uh, the is that the one that ends in the submarine where the ship comes by and they're yes. like, fuck you, I'm Hugo, in the submarine. Yeah. Hugo Drax is like this, he's kind of like the exact same plot of Moonraker except under the ocean. Gotcha. He's yeah. gonna like have his, his oh, I love underwater Ba-ba-ba-ba. layers. I love the aesthetics of those underwater layers, though. Nobody does. It's a great song. Love and I even think the, song, in this man. one, uh, Barbara Bach plays the Bond girl, yeah. Agent X. She, she works for Russia yeah. and she does a good job. Yep. Uh, this is also where we're introduced to. Jaws, yep. in the mm-hmm. Egyptian area. Like, there's a mm-hmm. lot. It's a lot going for it. Uh, That's a good movie. That's a cool. It's movie. a great movie. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not one of my. It is. It's my. It's my top half. It's in your top ten. Yeah, yeah. we're it's in the top. It was number twelve. It was number twelve for me. Okay. So it, it averaged out. All, it averaged out just below top ten. It is just below Boy, that in, our, in our ranking. It, but it is in the top half, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that one being very fun, mm-hmm. and I think I've seen clips on TV. Over the past 10, yeah. 10 or so years. Of that Isn't one. The Spy Who Loved Me the one where his car turns into a submarine, yes. too? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that, that was cool. Yeah. That's so cool. It's, it's, it's It does have a lot going for it. So that was your number nine. nine. You know, people shit on the Roger Moore ones, but he... Some of his are really Some fun. of them are really good. Some of them They're are really fun. bad. I mean, yeah. his are, you got some, yeah. some of them are in my top, Look, well, our and some lowest, of them are in my our absolute, bottom. Our absolute but lowest it, ranking so far was Moonraker. Well, it's, Between it's, the two of us. I don't think it's ever a question of who's a better actor, Roger Moore or Sean Connery, because let's be honest, but right. the Roger Moore ones do have a sense of fun that I don't think he also Sean did the Connery's most one had. Yeah, no. he did. He played Bond longer than anybody. Well, he actually. and Sean Connery actually, if you if you include Never Say oh, Never Again, both hit did it seven times. Oh, okay, that. yeah. Um, but but we'll put an asterisk Roger, by that. Roger Moore was more. He he played the he thought of the the, the James Bond character as a cartoonish character, so yeah. he played him yeah. as a oh. whereas well, and, and um, Roger Moore is the opposite of Sean Connery as a human being. Yeah, Sean Connery is kind of like Bond as a human being, like not always right. the best person. Whereas Roger Moore is a sweet man. Right. He had a his wife. There was a, there was a suit because his wife abused him. <laughs> James Bond had a like I don't I don't think he was suing her but like there was a uh, the police were called because his wife was beating him up essentially. Wow. Cuz he's that good of a There was, there was an one incident. movie where he had to slap a woman. Yeah. And I don't remember which movie it was, one of his movies where he, and it made, it was difficult for him to do it because he was such a good hard yeah. guy. Well, that's very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I like Roger Moore. Yeah. I like Roger Moore like too. Him. It's just I think his earlier movies Yeah. Just like all of them, their earlier movies are better, and then yeah. they start getting into this formula and trying to push his, out his, another one. His problem. are the most formulaic. Yeah, but uh, it's almost a culture shock between uh, the Sean Connery and then going into Live and Let Die. Like, there's a, it's... Yeah, but we're not too Live and Let Die yet. I know, I know. It, <laughs> we're close. It's just close. such a change, yeah. Because you just gave your number nine, right? Yeah. Your number nine. So yeah. mine, it's not for number eight. My number eight is Dr. No. Really? Yep. That surprises me. Well, it is. No, we'll come back to it. Okay. Yeah. My number eight is Goldfinger. Wow. Okay. Time to talk so Goldfinger. You're well, but honestly, I like again, Goldfinger. Yeah, but it's, it's still odd lower, job, you know. But that's it's still lower than a lot of people would put it. I, I, I thought it would be higher than that for you, even because right. I know for most people it's like top three, top five. Oh yeah, yeah. I love Goldfinger. I thought that was, that's one I actually remember and one of the first ones I saw. Well, eight means I like it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I'm I'm on your side here. It was lower on Jared's list than I, I thought. Anyone it. ever would put it. Yeah. It's, and I and I completely recognize that it just yeah. Is it's not, a fun movie. See, yeah. and I disagree entirely. That's the problem I have with it, is, is I have no fun with it. Oh, I love that one. The little Sean car Connery's chase through so, the Alps or whatever. Sean Connery's so rapey in it. 
he rapes a okay, woman. Okay, he kind of raped him. Yeah. Well, yeah, I forgot about that. I find that, the villain. But yeah, but it's like 1961. Because yeah. the voice of the villain isn't the same as the actor, and I find it really jarring to watch him. Yeah, I get that. His plot's fine. It's oh, in yeah. The, States what was the, his name? Ernst. Do the villain? Uh, yeah. Uh, or or, or, or Goldfinger. Gold yeah, well, Ari Goldfinger, played by Gert Frobe. Gert Frobe, Frobe. Yeah. The yeah. voice by Michael Collins. That was it. Yeah, he was. He, he mm. didn't know English, did he? I mean, I his English was way too broken for it to be yeah. heard. Yeah, the dubbing is a little weird, but odd job. No, I, odd I, job. I, it, he, uh, he was the first weird henchman. Yeah. And then the pl there's a plane sequence with yeah. Bond and Pussy Galore. Now, she is great. Honor Blackman right. as Pussy Galore is oh, fantastic. Oh, she's fantastic. She's great. She's well, not... I mean, she is the exact opposite of pretty much every Bond woman that came after her. No. She's not over-sexualized in a way that no. many of them are. Which she surprised She can really hold her own in a way that most of them couldn't. No. Uh, I mean, even in the end, the reason they were able to overthrow Goldfinger is because, I mean, he seduces Honor Blackman. You know, she kind of goes to the side, and then she kind of turns everyone against them. The planes don't drop the nerve gas they're supposed to. Yeah. Because what his plan was... Was to set a bomb off right. in uh, Fort Knox that was going to irradiate yep. all of the gold, yep. yeah. making it so that the Americans couldn't use their gold. Right. He wasn't destroying it; he was irradiating it. Right. So they couldn't use it, so they would have to use all of his gold. That was brilliant. Now there is one brilliant really cool time. scene in Goldfinger that I do like, where he bring uh, Goldfinger brings in all these other villains to his lair, and he's got this really cool table that pops up and yeah. a secret bunker, and then some of the people decide they don't want to go with him, so he kills them all. Yeah. Right. That does he drop? Is this the one where they're dropped in with sharks? Or? No, that's uh, the I final level. Yeah, okay, okay. Now this is the one I think he uses the nerve gas he was going to use later or something like that. that they were going to spray from this guy. And he just like okay. kills. Yeah, there's a, a table lot. full of people. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, pretty powerful. Uh, but the odd job fight with uh, Sean Connery is so slow. It's, so, <laughs> it's it's the old judo chops yeah. kind oh, of yeah. thing. Oh yeah. Uh, but it is, I mean, he is, I thought the guy who played uh, Odd Job was very fun. Okay, and I've heard he's a, I may be mistaken, but he was a, a horrible human being in real life. Like the guy an actual played, bad guy, yeah. Uh, the guy who played Odd Job? The guy who played Odd Job, yeah. I don't really, uh, I'm sure I can find Professor it Professor Nakatoro, I'm not Harold sure. Harold Sakata. Harold Sakata. Yeah, Cicada I was close. Um, I think I was thinking of a pro wrestler from back I'm in the 60s. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Professor he was, he Tanaka. Was, he was in a movie called The Wrestler when he played Odd Job. Oh, well maybe that was it. Maybe that's where I got confused. He was in a, a. He plays a wrestler. He did weightlifting for the Olympics. No. Yeah. He was a uh, heel as a wrestler who threw salt in his opponent's eyes. Yeah. But, and then he know. murdered someone. Um. In real life. I don't see anything I, I don't about know. that on here. He I got, can't substantiate that. He died of cancer so, too. So not, you're making up shit. Is I may be completely making this okay. up. I thought that I had read that he was a dick, but I don't. Well, know. He might have been. I don't know his yeah. human being. So that was your number eight. That was number eight. My number seven. It's time to talk. You only live twice. Oh, all right. That was the Robert Shaw one, wasn't it? No. That's from Ocean of Love. No, that's from Ocean of Love. You only live twice was the Oh, it's where he... Sean Connery, it's where he goes to Japan and becomes Japanese. Yeah. yeah. You and think it is he's dead at the beginning of the day. think he's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah Super, is. super racist. Yep. But for some reason, I love this one. Yeah. I find it, there's a volcano lair. Yeah, which was very in cool. In a crater. Uh, is the, this the, the one the where he has the line, one... see you later, irrigator? I there's, don't think that's what it said. The, the, I think it does somewhere in the. No, no, that is a line in a I Bond movie. Know that that's true. I'm going to look that up. I don't I know. Really, I like the fact that we they kill off Bond at the beginning and you, you think, oh, really? You're killing yeah. off yeah. Bond? Yeah, how do you kill off Bond? Call then, George Lazenby. This is my second life. Well, you only live twice, Mr. Bond. Right. There's, a, there's a fun. And then this is another one where there's a Bond girl in the beginning who you yeah. think is his love interest and then she gets killed. Yeah. There's yeah. a poison. There's a weird. They, there's a string that gets lowered from an assassin from a rafter. Trying yeah. to get into Sean yeah. Connery's mouth where they're going to drop a bead of poison down. Yeah. He rolls over and then this woman rolls over into it and drops it in her mouth and she dies like instantly. So, good assassination. It's fun. Yeah, it's, yeah it's I love that movie. assassination with the string. The, string going, the, bead of, uh, the bead of poison. There was a, very a ninja. Vincent Price movie that did that. The, yeah. Uh, I also think this is the one where there's a school of... I can't remember. Of, the Horrible Dr. Fox. A school of like ninja. That. I might be wrong about this being right. So, and yeah, there's a bunch of young one, girls yeah. who are like beating up these henchmen. Because they've been trained by, I think, Tiger Tanaka, who's a, a friend of Bond's in this one. Professor Tanaka, like the wrestler? No. Okay, so, yes, the line, see you later, irrigator, is in the movie. The reason you don't remember it is because it's in Thunderball. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which was really And you hate me. Thunderball. It was really low so, for me. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know who sings You Only Live Twice? No. Nancy Sinatra. Nancy Sinatra. Sinatra. Yeah. And uh, a story about that is, I think I talked about this when we were talking about the songs, is that the song you hear was made from multiple cuts. Because she That's was right. so That's nervous right. recording it, they couldn't get one good take. 
So they pieced together a bunch of pieces from multiple takes. And I like it a lot. Well, because yeah. growing up, if she was wrong, she'd be beaten with reeds. That's what yeah. I understand. Frank Sinatra would beat her with Makes reeds. He was a horrible Absolutely. human being. Reeds? Reeds. You know, like bamboo reeds and stuff yeah. like yeah, that. As, as you know, cattails. Yeah. She'd right. be beaten with cattails. Yeah. All right, Jeff, what is your number seven? Number seven from Russia with Love. Oh, we're not talking about that one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> We'll yeah, get back I, remember, to it. I remember you saying that's one of your favorites. It's time to talk Living Daylights. That is my number six. Okay. Because I love Timothy Dalton. I watched ten minutes of it and said, fuck this. I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah, I like Timothy Dalton a lot. Oh, it was awful. I like, I, like, I like him. He's so suave, but it's so much more intense than most Bond movies are. Yeah, he is a little more a intense. Lot of, now, there is one funny... We talk about funny assassinations on here. One guy gets assassinated with headphones. Like the with cord, headphones. the cord gets wrapped. Yeah, around. it just gets strangled. Strangled with headphones. Oh, Another assassination oh. is there's there's a, there's an assassin who's going out throughout this, and he rigs a sliding door to kill a guy. <laughs> so it's like it shoots across and like didn't cut the dude in half, but it just kills him. Oh, that's horrifying though. Uh, Joe Don Baker plays the bad guy in this. Yeah. And that's I like Joe Don. He plays Baker Brad Whitaker. He comes back in uh, the early Pierce Brosnan movies as an ally. Is he? Uh, He's not Felix Leiter, though. No, no, no. He's just, he's he just another okay. CIA agent. Because I always thought Joe Don Baker, that's who I think of John as Felix Reese Davis. Leiter. Sorry. Yeah, John Reese davis is in this. I love him a so much until I found out he's an anti-Semite. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he's Turkish. Okay. He's an actual... The movie has just anti-Semite. dropped he's down. He's really good at this. He plays, a, <laughs> right? he plays a Russian general who we think is a villain, turns out not to be a villain. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Andreas Wisniewski plays Necros. He's the assassin who uses a bunch of weird assassination things. I think he uses a boombox to kill somebody once. That's like, right. like That's so 80s right there, isn't it? Uh, so I, late Miriam 80s. Diabo plays the Bond girl. I oh, think who she's else gorgeous. did she play? I uh, know. I've, I've seen Miriam she's Diabo in, in other of things. Troy, Dorian Gray. I don't know. You watch a lot of crap. I don't know what you watch. Well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I think she's beautiful. She's a cellist. There's a uh, toboggan ride maybe in the cello case maybe down, that's a, down a... Uh, Oh, I don't and we've so. already talked about it. I know you don't like it, but I actually really like the theme song to Living Daylights. I don't like... No, uh, that's the one that I like. Uh, I like that I one better than too. Duran Duran. I, I do too. Jeff doesn't does. like that one. Uh, there's one aha uh, so- uh, song that I like, and this isn't uh, it. And uh, Is it Take Me On? Probably. Take on me. Probably. But I don't... Again, there's the sound quality... The sound quality of their song and their voice doesn't go with James Bond. No, but it's I did the song. It's this whippy sounding... <laughs> it's this whippy... Whippy sounding <laughs> song that doesn't go. Don't you know they always have the Bond sh- movies always start the same way with with these same kinds of graphics, right. and that song doesn't go with the graphics of the movie. No, I reckon it does. It does have one of my favorite cold opens. So almost every James Bond movie has a cold open where it's like a, a scene, right? And then the movie, and then it leads and then, into and then, the. Yeah. And so in this one, it's our introduction to Timothy Dalton, and there's a series of agents that are going to this island. They're trying to infiltrate the island secretly, even though. It's an exercise, so the yeah. group knows they're coming, so they're on the lookout for them. Right. And they're supposed to be using these paintball guns to shoot the agents that come in, but they're not. There's an assassin there killing these other agents. Oh, wow. And uh, there's a moment at the end where, I forget exactly how it does it. I think he jumps out of a truck and then parachutes down to this boat and meets this woman, and he, and he grabs his phone and says, Bond, James Bond. It's a really uh, cool cold that's, open. That's pretty neat. I'll, I'll have to give it a chance. It is I've a never given him a shot, so it, I can't shit I mean, on him. You know, you, you it's put, worth watching. You put I, it you know, in just, just, yeah. just below your top half. I swear, though, half, though yeah. I watched 10 minutes and I went, I can't. Well, I can't most James Bond movies are fun to watch, even if they're in the lower half of my stuff. It's not. It doesn't make my top 10, but it's 14. I would watch Moonraker. It's no good. I would watch it. Maybe because I caught it on TV and it didn't catch it from the beginning. Well, and, and a lot of people, you know, it was like again, the middle of the movie, and maybe that's you're why. transitioning from Roger Moore to Timothy Dalton. People are used to these jarring, yucky, jarring, yuck, yeah. kind of yeah. have a good time, and that's not what this one is. Right? Yeah, yeah he's a di- he's a different kind of Bond. He's a more evolved Bond. And Dalton did and two or three. He, he of did, them. did two. two. He's two even of them, even yeah. Mary Diablo, the, the Bond girl. He's kind of cold to her at times. Yeah, like he's supposed to be t- protecting her, taking her back. She's kind of the in the middle of this plot. There's a really odd. Scene, otherwise it'd probably be higher for me. Where he goes to Afghanistan uh-huh. and he's fighting with some Arabians and on, on horseback, and there's an uprising. It's it's really weird. oh, that's a that's a famous image of him. It's almost Lawrence of Arabia. It's, it's yeah. been yeah, yeah, it was like on Entertainment Weekly. Mm-hmm. I think there was the of him with the turban on and the yeah, Lawrence yeah. of Arabia shot. So Jeff, what is your number six? Quantum of Solace. Okay. Let's talk Quantum of Solace. China, it's been on my list to watch for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. I really want to watch it. I, well, then come over and watch it. I like the Daniel Craig that. movies. I get, I, I get yeah. it. He's a great I part. think of all the movies there, as you're going to find out, they're yeah. in my top 
Yeah, this I is the first one we've talked about. Well. <laughs> this is the first one of his we talked about, and it was I put it's the lowest I put at ten, and it was that was my lowest of yeah. Daniel Craig. Yeah. It was no, it's not Spectre. You Spectre, put, you said. Yeah, I put Spectre at seven. Oh, we haven't gotten to Casino Royale, right. have we? No, no. We'll no. that's the only one I can talk about. So, uh, but Quantum of Solace was interesting because it, it immediately follows Casino Royale. It is and a, I'd be picks up immediately well, after Casino that. Royale finishes on that kind of cliffhanger right. note yeah. where shoots, you go, oh, He shoots oh, a villain and then oh, it goes yeah. black. And, and then his one, girlfriend dies the in that opening, one. Yeah, the opening yeah. in this one is a car chase that is my favorite car chase in any movie ever. Yeah, I really like the Quantum of Solace okay, car chase. I'm going to have to check uh, I think Green, who plays the villain in this, he's charismatic and evil and creepy. Um, I, haven't, I don't even hate the Bond girl. Olga Kirilenko plays the uh -huh. Bond girl. She's got a she's got an arc. She's got a reason. It's kind of the same reason that you see in um, For Your Eyes Only, where it's a woman out for revenge. Right. But I, so I, yeah, I like Skyfall has yet to be mentioned by either no, of you. No, it, it won't be. No. And Spectre yeah, has been mentioned by one of you. I put it. I yeah. put it pretty low. It was not yeah. my top half. So then, and that's all. I'm right. Quantum of Solace, Casino Royale. Skyfall, he's done four. Spectre. He's done. He's, yeah. yeah, he's done. He's yeah, done. he's done four. Okay, and he's got the fifth one. The fifth one is, is he still doing he is, the, next the, one? the next? He's one. still doing is this. That. His last Bond. He said it, last one was gonna be his last one. So this because I know they were talking about Easter Eve. So probably be his last one, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah, you can um, never tell. Matthew Almerich plays the bad guy in this one. Um, Gemma Arterton's in it. Uh, this is Jeffrey Wright's second appearance. David Harbour's in it as well. There's some some pretty well-known people in this one. All right. That were in, like, yeah. Yeah, you know, David, you know David Harbour it. from Stranger Things. He plays the sheriff in Stranger yeah. Things. I love him. He's kind not of, by he, name, but I love that a, guy. He's kind of a corrupt CIA agent in this. Oh, that's great. So he's okay. kind of a bad guy. Yeah. He's a bad and guy. Felix Leiter is, you know, kind of moving up in the world. I love so. Felix Leiter. I can't get enough of that character. Mm -hmm. He yeah, plays, he's played he's by, great. I think, six, different, six seven At people. least. Yeah. Every time you see him, it's a different yeah, character. Yeah, it's a new guy. It's a and new, it's, a new, it's not only a new actor, actor, it's a new kind of iteration of yeah. Felix Leiter, too. They're, yeah. the, it's a different kind of character each time, yeah. too. All right, it's time to talk. My number five, License to Kill. License to Top Kill. Top five for me, because I love wow. Timothy Dalton. And, this and that was the second Timothy Dalton. Really movie, right? dark. Yeah. Really dark. And I'll be honest, <laughs> this is the highest one I have. It's 17 for me. This, yeah, wow. was, this is the highest one I have. A lot of difference in opinion on this one. Where I hate the theme song. I really do not enjoy the theme song for License to Kill. I think this is where I started hating the theme song. I don't hate many. There's only a few that I yeah, skip. Well, oh, I like Goldeneye. I like that theme. Tina Turner in it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. License to Kill was, um, let's see, Michael. Michael. No. Or was it Gladys Knight? Gladys Knight. Oh, the That's score it. was composed. Yeah, yeah, the Gladys Tina Knight Turner one. did another one, and I like that she one. Did Goldeneye. Gladys, she did Goldeneye. Gladys Knight okay. did uh, Live in, uh, License to Kill, I think. Okay. I can pull it up real fast. I, I don't, know. yeah, I don't. I don't really like very many of the yeah, right. theme right. songs from right. either Timothy Dalton or especially the um, the Pierce Brosnan Bond movies. I, none of those are they. I felt no, that they really don't I felt me. all of their I, all of their theme songs just like their movies. They had run out of ideas, yeah. and it was. I like and they were the world kind is of, not enough by garbage. I like that. One. I like I the world is not enough. I did not. Which which one was the Madonna one? Uh, so it. Worst theme song in the worst movie. Uh, awful. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. Which one was it? That was Diamond of the Day. Another the one day. I told okay. you not to watch. Yeah, terrible. Now, I like License to Kill. I think it's fun. There's a, a death by shark in this one. Um, Which you it, can it never go wrong It's with. a torture scene by shark. Ooh. Actually, no, it's Felix Slider. He doesn't die. He gets like his legs bitten off by the shark. They get bitten off? He's, he's getting married in this, and there's a drug kingpin who is like mad at Felix Slider because he got arrested and so Holy he gets attacked shit, by I gotta shark watch and doesn't die, movie. I believe. I think it's <laughs> now you're, it's also now got, you're ready um, to watch it. Uh, shark, 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 shark eating off people's legs. legs. Robert, Robert yeah. Davi plays the bad guy. Um, oh, he was a great 80s bad guy. Carrie Lowell plays Pambuvia, the Bond girl, who's my favorite Bond girl. Yeah. But you've also got um, Wayne Newton in this one. Huh. Yeah. Plays Professor Joe Butcher. Bless her heart. A really young Benicio Del Toro as the like, no henchman. Shit. Yeah. You can't understand a thing he says. Of course not. But he's great. He plays Dario. I, I just, I don't know, I love this one, man. I'm, it's a soft spot in my heart. I really like it a lot. Robert Dobby is, is one of my favorite Bond villains. He's so disturbing. He's the pockmarked guy, right? He's yeah. kind of had a skin yeah. problem back in the day. Yes, I love him. He's, I love uh, him. he's, a, he's a drug kingpin. They're, they're, they're selling drugs, and it's just it's filthy. He, it's much like Stephen Burkoff, he was a quintessential mm -hmm. 80s villain. He was mm -hmm. villain in so many films. All right, so that was my number five. So yeah. what is your number five? Spectre. All right, let's talk Spectre. I really like Spectre. Oh, wow. That's interesting. My number five was your number 17. Yeah. Your number five was my number 17. Wow. So those, those, <laughs> those two are, are cool. going to tie. <laughs> How cool is that? I, I, I really like Spectre. I don't know why it's number 17 for you. I'll tell you why you. it's so low for me. I like everything about it except for Christoph Waltz's Blofeld. And not that he did a bad job as Blofeld, but that it's, it's this setup where 
either you know it's coming, so it's not a big deal, yeah. or you have no idea who it is, and it's not a big deal. So either way, it's, like, it's not it's a big just, deal. It's just, he does a great job as the villain. He's so dark, he's Chris so Waltz. creepy. He's great. He, he does a really good job. I like the Bond girl in it. I like the theme song, even though everyone hates the theme song. I like it. I like the theme song. Sam, I don't it, really it, like it, the theme it is song one of the most despised James Bond theme songs. I like it. Sam Smith. It's okay. smooth, it's lighter, but he's, he's got such strong vocals that yeah. I, I find it really enjoyable. Yeah. All right. So number, what are we up that to? Was, uh, so my number four is Goldeneye. Okay, my number four is... No, it's, we're talking Goldeneye now. Oh, go ahead. Goldeneye. We are running out of time now. I apologize. Yep. We're gonna have to I love time. Goldeneye. Goldeneye was the Sean first Bean, Sean I Bean like is everything the... about it. It's my second yeah. favorite Bond girl. I love that one. I find it fantastic. Uh, there's, that's the one with the tank chase. Right. It's got a lot of really good moments. Sean Bean is one of my favorite Bond villains yeah, as well. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's and the end fight on the big satellite mm -hmm. dish, yeah, badass. Good. Just a badass moment. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a lot more to say about that because of, uh, again, running low on time. But it is great. That's the one with Tom K. Jansen is, as well. Uh, you can give me Tom K. Jansen any day of the week. Yeah, and she's I'm, great. No, she is God, gorgeous. God, she's magnificent. Well, and the yeah. way she kills in this movie. Is that with her legs? Yes. Like she, yes, she she scissors them to death. That's probably not the right thing to say. I mean, it's right true. Now, scissoring it's it true. doesn't mean now what it meant ten years ago. You know, does it mean something? Different? Uh, yeah, oh, okay. it's it's that strangles uh, the legs. I mean, yeah. She, yeah, she, yeah, but she would strangle with the legs. She yeah. get him in a in a chokehold with her thighs I, orgasmically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's getting yeah. off on. But this you know what? Well. That's my way to go. If I'm going to go <laughs> out, it's between Famke Jansen's legs. I'm fine with it. Oh yeah. So uh, that was my number four, Jeff. Your number four. Live and let die. All right, let's talk live and let die. Live and let. That was my number nine. One of the most fun James Bond. I love the Bond. I put it much lower than he did, but it's still my top. It's a Yafi Koto as the voodoo guy. Oh, that's fun. This is the second one that's come up in the top ten for both of us. And it's the first Roger Moore movie and first Roger Moore and New Orleans. I like New Orleans. And Bob McCartney and Wings. R. J. Pepper is in that one. Oh, he's. We've also got Solitaire as the Bond girl. Oh, the one and I did that. That. We did a bit She's on that earlier. I I had introduced the bit with uh, it was one of the ultimate challenges, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Where I gave the quote and Jared got it like immediately because of of uh, a loving James Bond. The, yeah. Well, you got you got Clifton James as Sheriff J W Pepper. Yeah, I love. A super He's racist. Such a hoot, uh, though. Jeffrey Holder as Baron Samity. Right, really which is great. One. Jeffrey is, Holder is fun. Have uh, a sprite. <laughs> oh, you got them. Whisper, who is who is a guy who has no voice box. He can't talk. One of the henchmen. Right. Also got Quarrel, uh, Quarrel Junior, who was from uh, uh, Doctor No. Like yep. he's supposed to be his. You've also got I don't remember the guy's name. One of the Bond villains. Oh, Teehee. He's the one who can't talk. Also, he's, Tee, got, a, he's yeah. got a claw for a hand. Yes. So there's a lot, yeah, a lot a of good stuff movie. on that one. Yep. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. New yep. Orleans. New Orleans. Yep. Yep. That's where he runs movie. over the alligators' heads. Yep. Yeah, like, that's alligators. so much fun. Actual that alligators. was so cool. <laughs> Actual alligators, no shit. Yep. All right. That's so that was number what four. Did my number three that. is Skyfall. My number three is Skyfall. We did it. We all right. High five times. Finally did it. We agreed on great one. Great song, Adele's it Skyfall. Oh, it's I top love that song. Top two theme song for me. Top two theme She's, song. She's she was an outstanding choice to yep. sing yep. James Bond. If they brought her back, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, perfect voice. She's like Shirley Bassey, right? Perfect voice for it. And what's great about Skyfall? The Bond girl is M. Yeah, she's the Bond girl. <gasps> no shit. I mean, essentially, they don't have sex or anything, but she right, is the but female. Right, but it's still lead. it's still yeah. Judy Dench. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. She is so good. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely such good. a Fantastic. great replacement I, yeah. for Desmond Llewellyn. Yeah. No, that's Q. No, she was, replaced, was Desmond um, Llewellyn. Desmond Llewellyn was Q. He was the longest. He's been in the most. Yeah. No, she but John Cleese took his place. Bernard Lee was the original M. I think yeah. there was an M after that, but I don't know who yeah. it was. Yeah, Bernard Lee. Javier Bardem as the villain is incredible. Of course. Naomi Harris as Eve Moneypenny, like the yeah. new Moneypenny. Oh, it just yeah. did a lot of new takes on things. It introduced Ray Fiennes, who is now M. Yeah. Who is a oh very, wow? He's been in M in two movies. Oh, yeah. I need to. Albert, I've really got to catch up. Albert on this. Finney was in this. Oh, I love Kincaid. Albert Finney. I thought he was dead though. They introduced a new. He might be now, but this was. Years ago. I they thought he was dead um, a couple years ben ago. Ben Wishaw is the new Q, like the younger tech genius kind of guy. Oh, that's great. He, got, he, he took over from to John, yeah. John Cleese, okay. Yeah, who is R slash Q. Right. Um, and then uh, uh, Ben Wishaw has a lot more to do in Spectre. He's really fun yeah. Inspector as, as yeah. Q. But Skyfall is just a great, great movie. Yeah. That's awesome. I wouldn't Absolutely. say about every one, of the, uh, every one of the Bond movies, but this one's just Skyfall is, yeah. Yeah. All right. So my, uh, both of us said that my number two is Casino Royale. My number two is Dr. No. Okay. I love Doctor No. I love Doctor No. Movie. It's yep. the first James with Bond movie. With the Ursula movie. Andress with the white bikini. Yep. Yeah. Is that yeah? That's, that that's one, iconic. Because that it, number, uh, it's no, iconic. Number nine, uh, no, it was 
Number eight for me. Because it yeah. sets up the whole the whole thing is set yeah, up that's it. in that movie. That's your yeah. James Bond. You're introduced to James yeah. Bond in that I love film. Dr. And the no. Bond the girl. Theme song, the Bond the theme song was there. Yeah. There's yeah. another there's another theme that kind of goes all the way through it, but it was the you know the original Bond theme song. Yeah. Is that the one with the three blind mice yes. theme yeah. in that one? Yeah. With people yeah. getting assassinated while these regular guys are Yeah, you have the people mice. on the street. I don't it. think the villain is the most compelling. I don't think the Bond girl is the most compelling. Only reason I docked it. It's a it's a yeah. fun movie. It introduced James Bond, but I just it has a couple dings for me. Yeah. My that was your number two? Yep. Okay, so my, uh, my number roll, one please. is from Russia with Love. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. What, what, I'm sorry, I didn't write that. What was that number for you? I know you put that one lower. From Russia with yeah, Love? what was your number for that one? I've got to find it. Oh, it was seven. Never mind, I see it. It was okay. seven. So, okay. So, I, I love from Russia with Love. Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw is, Shaw is Grant. great in that. I, it is I, a good one. It is, I think, it, for me, it just follows all the all the highs and lows. And this one, to me, if I remember correctly, was a little more actiony than Doctor No. Yeah, it, it was. was a lot more fighting. They started and, and introducing more of their stuff and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Express, yeah. He yeah. Fights. yeah. There's a very lot. cool. Very there's a, there's cool a gypsy flick. fight in it. Like they go to the gypsy camp. Oh, and, that's. And great. What's interesting about Red Grant is he's trying to keep Bond alive the entire movie. Yeah. Because he wants Bond to steal this. Uh, it, basically the Enigma. It's called Elector, but it's essentially right. the Enigma machine to crack codes. And Bond steals it, and then he takes it from the end, but you know, obviously Bond gets the better. In my sure. opinion, the most beautiful Bond girl of all time. I love the Bond girl in For Much With Love. She is gorgeous. Well, I'll have to check that out. For a while there, Hulu had many of the Bond uh, movies. I don't know if they still do, but if you want to check out Bond. Uh, her name is Daniela Bianchi. Let me just show you that Not picture. Familiar. Let me just show you that picture real fast. Oh, yes! Daniela Bianchi. Uh, it also has Rosa Klebb. As a, a kind of a henchman who's in charge of this, just just really good. And then your number one. My number one is Casino Royale. Casino, Casino Royale. Royale. The I Daniel think Craig, Casino the Royale. Daniel Craig reboot of the entire series. I think it's just it's a better series. Best it, jarred jarred time. Time. It, it jarred me. It jarred me. Great theme song. He, his Bond is the only human Bond. Yeah, and it, the and rest he struggles. He struggles the, at times. Right. It's the other are caricatures. His is. And you see him bleed, you see him get yeah, hurt. Yeah. You well, you see, see him in pain with that, right. the woman who dies that he falls in love with, kind of. He's, he's it's human. It's a dark, and dark movie. That movie is like one of the best movies ever. I just yep, love I the movie. Yeah. Great, again, great yeah, theme song. I, I really enjoy yep. it. Eva Green as Vesper Lynn is amazing. Uh, the villain in that, he cries blood. Uh, yeah, forget oh, the, yeah, that's right. I forget that's the right. name of the actor. I'm going to feel so stupid. He played Hannibal in Hannibal, uh, the TV show. Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen, yeah, he's the villain. He's yeah, great. Yeah, he's great. Amazing, and Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter gets introduced. Uh, just incredible. Even they, they even make poker fun to watch. Yeah. Even though they don't yeah. use it very often. The There's little car parkour scene, the parkour scene where the dudes they it's climb the, up the, the building. Open, open. Yeah. yeah, it was badass. Yeah. yeah. John, uh, James Bond gets tortured by getting hit in the nuts. And, and they, the rope. oh, that's right. They yes. have fewer gadgets in this movie. They yeah. did. It, that's it, one it thing was more I didn't realistic. Like even I, yeah. I, I, I like, like the gadgets. I like the gadgets, but they had gotten into this thing where the gadgets were the whole movie. The movie was the gadgets, so they got away. They did away with most of these gadgets. There was no cue in that movie or in Columbus Solace. And and by getting. It focused it back on the story and Bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, now I can I, give you... That's true. All right. Now that we've talked through all the movies, I can give you our definitive rankings. Excellent. Number 20, I guess we, 25, is Moonraker with a composite score of 24, an average 24. Maybe everybody right? hates that one. Yep. Never Say Never Again was 23.5. Which nobody likes. Okay. Dying of the Day at 23. Uh, the World is Not Enough at 19.5. We have a tie here, Ron. You need, to, you need to settle this. All right. At 19, we have For Your Eyes Only and The Man with the Golden Gun. I'm going to put For Your Eyes Only uh, because it's not memorable. So lower? Yeah. So The Man with the Golden Gun will be slightly higher than yeah. that. Yeah. Man with the Golden Gun, at least it's got Scaramanga. Next up, we have another... Uh, next up, we have at 16.5, so a bit higher than those. Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah. 15.5, Thunderbolt. Which I'm... Hmm. Fourteen point okay. five because of me, Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, and then we have another tie. Thirteen point five. We have View to a Kill and On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And I've only seen bits and pieces. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, View to a Kill as a little bit better. As, as a little bit better. Okay, yeah. so On Her Majesty's Secret Service and View to a Kill because of the Zeppelin fight. Another tie at twelve point five. We have Diamonds Are Forever and Octopussy. Oh, uh, Octopussy above Diamonds Are Forever. Okay. For sure, and I like both of them very yep. much. But I, and the, 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 we are we are right at top half now. Yeah. Okay. Another tie at eleven. Okay. Spectre and License to Kill. Uh, I can't. I he can't hasn't let, seen uh, Spectre. Yeah, well, let's put Spectre go. above that one because it, it sounds better. It's Dang got it. Christoph Waltz in it. <laughs> License to Kill. All right, ten point five. Spy Who Loved Me. Ten. Living Daylights. Eight point five. You Only Live Twice. Eight. Quantum of Solace. And here is our top five. Okay. At number five, Live and Let Die with an average six point five. 
At number Great four, movie. Dr. No, with an average of five. At number three, From Russia with Love, with an average of four. At number two, Skyfall, with an average of three. And, and with an average of 1.5, Casino Royale. Casino Royale oh, yeah. is the number the best one. Bond movie of all the time. best Bond movie ever made. All of them are fun, though. Yep. Except for Dino of the Day, which just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Well, I hope, hopefully, dear deckheads, you've enjoyed this ranking of James Bond movies. Hopefully, you will watch them all now and give us back to your definitive. I actually, ranking. I'm going to go home and look for James yeah, Bond. I own them all on Blu-ray. Now. I own all of them yeah. on Blu-ray. Uh, that is about all we got for today. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to hear feedback from you guys. We love hearing from you. Your thoughts on episodes, your answers to our favorites, questions, and such and such. But until Absolutely. next time, stay wild. Stay wild, Mr. Bond. By the edge, Mr. Bond. Mr. Bond. Mr. Bond.